and welcome back to Scout Tech, everyone. Today's episode, I'm going to be catching you up on the updates, some new gifts, some increase to boss spawn rates, followed by talking about our white progression. Me and Giga got some separate goals that we're kind of going through, so we'll be discussing that and what's changed the swipe and challenges and whatnot. And then we'll be closing out with some gun discussion and recoil discussion as well. Also, just a quick update. Uh, we were going to do a Greg Zone segment this week. That's been pushed back to next week because there's some stuff I wanted to formally and thoroughly investigate before I give you out any information. So yeah, how's it going, Giga? It's going good. Going good. Slowly but surely trundling my way towards max traders, mm. you know. I'm like, I don't know, I, I kind of, it's just, it's this tricky thing, right? Like, it just takes, I, I'm still, I'm sort of balancing it as like a creator more than anything else. Yeah, like, I get that. I'd, I'd like to play more, I think, but like, especially at the moment, because I'm, I'm actually like really enjoying myself right now on stream and just playing, because I feel, I feel sort of like unshackled from the, the Kappa thing. So I'm just like, want to get to Max Traders and then like do some fun stuff. Um, but I feel sort of like bottlenecked into like trying to pick like min max, like EXP per time quests. So yeah. Like I'm level 38 now, which is, you know, it's, it's okay for me, but um, <clears throat> I'm like part way through Max Traders, like halfway. So obviously I need to get to 42 for Ragman, but I've got like most of what I need, you know, like Crapper 4, Peacekeeper 4, Gear 4, which is, you know, decent selection of stuff. The weapon mods that come from Mechanic 4 are like nowhere near as important as they used to be. You know, like it used to be a huge power spike when you got to level 40 because you'd unlock like yeah. um, the advanced tube for the, for the M4 and like all this kind of stuff. Whereas now it just doesn't really matter so much. And I'm sure we'll talk about that a bit later. I, I think there's like there's pros and cons to the way that things have gone down. But yeah, I'm like trundling my way forwards. I've been playing a lot of streets, which has actually been quite cool. So I've been, definitely enjoyed that. But uh, yeah, I've recently like swerved back to playing more shoreline and running into resorts and stuff because I like left a lot of those quests until now-ish. But they're like they're now sort of like floating up into the best quest to do kind of thing. Because like beforehand, it was just um, it was really obvious not to do them because I could do stuff like uh, you know, go to the bank and grab a document and then leave, and it's like twenty k XP. It was now like I've done pretty much all of those easy ones. Now I'm on to sort of the slightly harder ones or the ones that are like sub 10k. So what I've been doing is I've been trying to go to Shoreline and do like two at once. So I'm either doing one of Wet Job, one of Cargo X, or like one of something else and one of like Wet Job, whatever, like try and do two together. So then it's like I get eight from one, I get eight from the other, and it's 16 for both in one raid. And that's been working out quite well. So, you know, I'm racing through those tasks too, so it's good. But yeah, the, the progression just takes a long time, you know, it's like I'm... Where am I right now? I'm like halfway through level 38. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so level 39. But it's still like 103k XP to get to 39. And then it'll probably be 200,000 to get to 40. And then probably another 500k to get to 42. Maybe even more. Maybe even 600. So that's, you know, it's a lot. I'm, I'm sort of staring down the best part of a million XP to get to level 42. It's a, it's a, lot, it's a lot of experience. It's a lot of runs. It's a lot of quests. It's a lot of stuff that I don't necessarily want to do. And I'm slowly becoming less tolerant of doing the things that I don't want to do. Like some stuff I don't care, like run fetching stuff, whatever, but like some things I just don't want to do anymore. Yeah, I get that. I, I find myself having a similar dilemma where I'm trying to min-max my EXP slash, you know, stacking quests together, but also what's going to be the least sufferable thing that I can tolerate at least? Well, like there's like a fun equation that's mixed in, you know? That's why like I kind of didn't mm -hmm. really mind doing shooterborn grind because like like i said i can sometimes get into a, a sniping vibe and when i'm in that vibe you know yeah. it, it feels good and it's like fun but some of these quests i'm like ah oh, dude i just like i was playing reserve wednesday doing pest control because oh, no. it's required for kappa and then after that unlocks the gluhar kill class which i didn't realize so, because I already killed Gluhar, and I thought I had the Gluhar quest, but I didn't, because I had to do pest control, which is where you got to kill scavs in the pond buildings. So I just was like, oh, I got to like, A, it's like you got to get over there. If you don't spawn over there, you got to get over there. And then once you're there, you just kind of camp and wait for player scavs to come in and kill them, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> fine, I guess, you know, but yeah, it's just like sometimes like trying to get there. And then once I got there, there was also just other people 
probably doing the same thing and just camping. And so like I, you know, walk in and I just die. I get one tapped in the back of the head. I was like, oh, okay. You know, glad mm. I spent 20 minutes doing, you know, it's just anyways. So there's definitely like a, I, I can relate to your struggles in just a, a slightly different way. Cause it's just trying to find that balance between mid maxing, watching numbers go up and progressing, but also not going mentally insane. <laughs> Yeah, what level are you now? Uh, 45. Actually, it spiked up like okay. three levels since we last talked. I think... Um, Have you been doing dailies and weeklies? Because that really helps once you get to 45. Um, I Well, I just got 45 Wednesday, I think that was. Oh, actually, I guess it hasn't kicked in too much. No, yet. but I, I, I got pretty lucky. I forgot. I, I did like a chain of quests, so I did... Um, Shooterborn, I got that completed, and I got... Tarkov 7, Tarkov Shooter Part 7 and 8 done that same day, I think. Mm. Um, plus I got Chumming done. I just had to kill PMCs, like two more PMCs at night. And that gave me... Yeah, I haven't done that one either, actually. Yeah, because then that gave me... Oh, because I even think I did bullshit previously. And then that gave me like Flint, which I already had done. You just need like five mm. search or charisma or something. So I got like a lot of unlocks that really like shot me up in EXP. Yeah. That's good. There's no specific level lock for Kappa, right? It's like the highest level quest is the problem. Pretty well much. More so than like the level requirement. Because what's the, is it Crisis? I can't, I can't remember which one is the highest level that you need. I don't know. I really don't. This is like <laughs> my first actual, like I've always like jokingly been like, yeah, I'm going to go for Kappa and I'll collect a few <laughs> items. And then eventually I just like, lose interest and stop yeah i think it's crisis crisis is level 48 so you're pretty much there so like level 48 is not that high really <sighs> dude i yeah but i haven't found a like i have found like two lennoxes and both times i died with them so i'm just like uh, i have zero i don't even have a thick items case from therapist yet i have i bought one manually oh i see well with the moonshine yeah. part or, whatever, or like Lennox Lennox part, part, yeah yeah Oh, interesting. Yeah, I got really lucky and got one in the scav case, which is pretty cool. But like my Achilles heel, this wipe is like firstly fuel conditioners. Mm. I literally just cannot find the last one. Like I did start to find them, but I've been on one for like the entire wipe for some reason. Like normally it's never a problem. Never had an issue before. And this wipe, I'm st I was just didn't find any. I found like when I got like uh, camped by that four man until literally the end of the raid, there were like two. They had two on them and I had two on me because mm. I had looted off them. I didn't manage to survive, so I died oh. there. So that was like half the all the fuel conditions yeah. I'd ever seen in the whole of this wipe, like in one raid. I was like, God damn it. Um, but I'm still at three out of four. Like I have found like two more, mm -hmm. but I'm still at three out of four, don't have another one. And then the same thing, I'm just like cursed for GPUs. Like usually it's fine. I'm trying to do like farming four. And, uh, and because I've been playing streets, I've actually found two more. So I've got one GPU left to, to get, and I found two on streets and then died with them in my ass, which is like, <laughs> the most annoying thing ever one of them was fair enough and the other one was like the worst thing ever i was dude i was absolutely <laughs> stacked with loot i was stacked it was crazy yeah. like i killed um killed a bunch of people and then killed this player scav who was running towards the extract and they'd killed two guys he actually came in chat and he was just like he was like in also like he wasn't trying to like bait me or anything like he didn't have a duo he was like you're gonna want to loot that body like honestly i've i just had like the raid of my life like you know enjoy the loot kind of thing and um yeah, he, is, he had like everything on him with GPU, like all sorts of stuff. And then I just tried, literally tried to go from there to go back to the theater. And there was a scav who was running like through the central like courtyard bit at the same time, like the big square area outside the theater mm -hmm. at the same time. He ran past. I shot at him like two or three times with the SVD, heard like the, oh, you know, sound and was just like, yeah, he's dead. Ran at him and he was at the like air vent extract, but he wasn't dead and he was lying prone. And he P90'd me with like the flesh round and killed me. And I was like, oh my God, I literally, ha I, might, I had like 3 million <laughs> worth of loot on me. Like de definitely, like two or three mils worth of loot. I was like, this isn't, I mean, the GPU is like 800k on its own. Mm. And it was the last one I needed for the quest as well. And I'd done like the, go to the, no, whichever building that is, the real estate office, like go to that one and grab the thing. I'd like beat in there. So I had that quest as well. And uh, yeah, I managed to die with it again. So like, I've had like, I've got like two GPUs. I've got, I actually ended up buying all my GPUs. So I've got 25 out of 25 in the Bitcoin farm level two at the minute, because I haven't been to labs yet. And uh, I've got two just like lying around in my stash and on finding raid, because like, you know, they were the most valuable thing that I got out and replaced with my CMS with. But um, 
So yeah, I need another one of those as well. Like these, some of these items are just really weird. Like field conditioners, I've been trying to go for some. Uh, I've been trying to go for some of these like more industrial places just to start getting a bit more chance to find them. And um, yeah, it's just just tricky. I don't know. I'm like I never normally have a problem. So this is the, it's one of those weird things when you suddenly have an issue with something, and you're just like, where do I usually get these? Because like mm-hmm. if you suddenly just don't find them, you're like, well, I've never actually looked for them. So now I'm like, hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm like trying to keep a bit more of an eye out. Yeah. I feel a bit cursed for this. Like same with the vertex thing. Like I still haven't yeah. found any since I managed to run out with the run through on my the first one that I found. <laughs> so I'm still at zero out of two. Oh uh, yeah. I think like I think things like that. They're like definitely pressing down on my like desire to push through because mm-hmm. I've had like pretty bad RNG luck with some of these things and some of these items. And I'm like, well, I'm definitely not going to go for the max traders. Like I don't even know if I want to go for light keeper this way. But you need like. <sighs> five two fdm radios yeah and i like did a bunch of lighthouse when i was doing punisher 4 and i found like that one vertex that i managed to screw up and i found literally no radios at all so far so i was just like well like i haven't even got i haven't found i literally haven't found any so like am i gonna get am i, am I suddenly gonna find five like am i am I really gonna grind lighthouse for three <laughs> weeks to find like five cft like i just, I just don't want to do it man like i just i just really don't want to do it i'm just like fed up of it um Anyway, before before I go off like on too much of a <laughs> right, right. a deviation, let's let's just like pick up on some of the little things that have happened. The the first one, the main piece of news is the boss ball rates have in- increased. There's been lots of people complaining on Twitter and you know wherever about boss ball, ball rates being too low, like down eleven percent or whatever. There's like a ton of people who are on the boss kill quests. Technically, me included. Like I did finally get through to those, and yeah, you get them all at once now, which is nice. But I think the issue is is a lot of people who are on those. And some of them, some of them are quite unhelpful. Ones like Sturman mm-hmm. are quite unhelpful because there's like, you know, the quest to kill him 20 times. So there's like always people, gr- like even it's not just like, oh, I kill him once and then I'm done. Like there's a bunch of people who are like, oh, now I need to kill him 19 more times to get, you know, this other stupid quest. So it's like, he's always contested. Same with Killer is like always contested. So it makes it really difficult to actually go and do these things. Um, like I am yet, like we had this, I was having a conversation in my Discord about, killer in particular because um holy duck who's helping me with some testing is like trying to get him and it's just like it's just crazy and i was like man like i honestly don't think i've killed killer for like three wipes four wipes like, yeah. I, like I have i definitely haven't seen him this wipe i think i saw him last wipe and i like I, I finished long line last wipe i think i saw him once in the whole wipe um it's just like i don't know it just doesn't make sense but anyway at least now they are what are they now 20 right 20 percent chance and the goons as well. So there's a little bit easier time finding them. You don't run 20 raids and see them one time, which is really demoralizing. And then, you know, he's already dead or whatever. So it's really painful. Oh, yeah. And uh, yes, th- thank you. Uh, Ida in chat just reminded me. To make matters even worse. So and one of the issues with bosses in general, like Rishala is a pain, right? Because he can't, he doesn't always spawn with the golden TT. So you do all the work. Oh, you do yeah. the right thing. And then he doesn't spawn with the golden TT. Well, Killer is now the same. They've made it even worse because Killer doesn't always spawn with his actual helmet. He now can spawn with the Neo Steel helmet, like which is all well and good because that like mm, jaw piece thing is like one of the few neck class three protection that comes on a helmet. Okay, fine, but like he doesn't spawn with his helmet, so you can go and kill Killer, which is technically the easiest part of the quest. And then getting the helmet out is the hardest part of the quest because you have to go to the body, loot it, take the thing, and survive. Like if you had the helmet done and not the kill. Like, I'd way rather it be that way around. But the fact that now he doesn't always spawn with the helmet, it's just like, oh, why, guys? Like, come on. Like, put, put his helmet in his bag or something, you know? It's just, <laughs> I, I, don't, like, I don't care if he spawns with something else. Just, like, when I do the work, I want to make sure that I am actually rewarded, especially if it's something that's really hard and really RNG, because then it's like... Doubly RNG. You have to roll the dice. <laughs> yeah, you have, to, you have to roll the D20, and you have to hit a 20, and then... That, like when you get that, you then have to roll another dice. And if you get one to three, you just lose. Then there's a, a like, skill check and a uh, <laughs> RNG yeah. check. <clears throat> yeah. So at least the bosses have been uh, have been upped in, in spawn rate. <clears throat> Again, not that I've really seen them. Actually, to be fair, I'd go, I tried to go and fight Caban because I'd completed a quest on streets that didn't need survival. And I went to go, like, I heard he was up. So I went in. I shot one of the guards directly in the head with the SVD, with the laser, blood splattered, and then he turned around on the mountain machine and it killed me. So that was great. That's been my <laughs> you know, boss and AI experience for this wipe. Um, so the other part of uh, things that have been going on is the whole free loot thing. So I think they just, uh, they literally just posted something now, right? Yeah. 
the Happy Lunar New Year. Indeed. Year of the Dragon. So, Year of the Dragon. And I think... What do they say? Oh, you okay? So this isn't a code one. This is a you have to go to your profile page, and then click the button mm-hmm. to get something. I don't know what you get exactly. I think it was. Have you done it yet? No, I saw someone. I think it was a vector forty five of some FMJ ammo and some other random bits and bobs. I think it was mostly okay. gear. Um, yeah, and there was a. Mm. Still Series One, previously it was like a partnership with ESG and Still Series, put in some code, but that ended on the seventh. So if you missed out, that was like a limited time. It was like a couple stock HKs and whatever. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I had, a, I actually have a Steel Series mouse, mm-hmm. and I went to go and do it, and it just said an error occurred. <laughs> so it didn't even work for me, <laughs> which was great. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like the the, uni- the talk of universe is conspiring against me at the moment for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, it's funny because I'm like, I'm actually having quite a good time in Raid, like just playing the thing and exploring stuff, especially, especially Streets of Tarkov. Like, yeah. I've, I've actually just enjoyed, I'm just enjoying my time on that map. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's just fun. I still, I'm, I'm in that stage of, I know the map, mm-hmm. but not everything intimately. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, and also, they've opened up a load of extra stuff that I didn't realize was open. And I keep discovering things that I thought were closed, but are now opening up. And it's actually making streets a lot better, in my opinion. So, like that real estate office, like that just wasn't open before, I'm pretty yeah. sure. And that's like, that's part of the, you know, the great run the gauntlet from down by courtyard extract. If you spawn down there, if you run up to the car extract, like, yeah, we talked about this ages ago when streets first came through and it's like you're looking at all the doors on your left because it's just a big open space on your right hand side you're looking at all the doors on your left and it's just like can i go in that nope can i go <laughs> nope can i go in that nope can i get nope well, well now you kind of can there's like a few places you can go in you can go in the real estate one there's like the spawn that people normally go into and then there's the whole section which is this this is the part that's blown my mind there's one spawn and it's it's kind of hard to describe exactly where it is but it's the tiny little room with like the gold spawns in it if that makes sense. It's the one... So if you're at the... Uh, it's, it's sort of in the courtyard. It's, it's like near the courtyard area for where Check 15 is, mm-hmm. kind of, for like the rear entrance. It's on that little corner between the post office building and the sort of row of buildings where the archway starts. And in that little corner, there's a metal door and there's a dead scav on the floor and a box next to him. And that could be a Bitcoin spawn. And it's that little room. Now, that little room used to just be like, if you were in there and someone pushed you, you were just shafted, right? There was nothing you could do. But that room now opens out onto the street, one way into a restaurant-y kind of thing, another way into some other shop kind of thing, and like out onto like the main street. So you can go from like the crossroads in the middle of the map by the underpass bit, and you can just like get through and past post office without going through it, which is like really cool. Like I, did, I honestly didn't realize you could do this. Like I had chat being like, where are you going? Like you could just go through this door here. And I was like, really? I was like, it was, it's, uh, yeah. I was like, there's quite a few like fun areas that I just didn't know that you could traverse through that now you can. So like with streets opening up, it's just like a lot more fun. And also, especially like say you have um, like Sewer River as an extract, for example, Mm -hmm. and you're over in like Concordia, you can skirt around the edge of the whole map, but now you don't have to just like run past Pinewood Hotel or like, or say you want to use the green flare, it doesn't really matter either either one, but the green flare is probably more appropriate. You now don't have to run past Pinewood, like just on the road next to that van, because now there's the military academy where Colin Ty can spawn, and you can go through the little square at the back as well. So like, there's like loads more of these like safe routes that have appeared on streets, and I'm genuinely really liking it. I think it's like super cool actually. So I, I just kind of want to play more streets and like not worry about this stuff. Sort of like I, I don't think I was into streets as much as I am now after doing all the quests again this wipe, because some, there's some new ones and there's like the relaxation room which is quite fun and. Yeah, it's just like, it, it's cool. I, I, do, I do like it. I do like the map a lot. Yeah, very good. I like it as well. I mean, it's probably the most enjoyable map for me as well. Probably number one. And yeah, I mean, there's just so much to do, so much to loot. Like, you can stay in the raid for like an entire hour. Like, literally, because there's so much food. So many resources on the map. Like, it's just, it runs, for me, it runs pretty consistent compared to like 
some of the like woods and shoreline, these bigger like woodsies <laughs> maps kind of run hmm. inconsistent for me, depending on like. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like where I'm looking, you know, if I'm looking like in the basically oh, like I the see. center of them, if I'm like on the outskirts of the map and I look in the center of the map, I just like can feel the frames dipping. And then if I open up a scope as well, you know, like a, a yeah. 4X or 6X, then it's like I can really feel the frames dropping. Which is unfortunate. Well, the streets is bad everywhere, so, it, you know, it feels nice and well, consistent. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it runs pretty all right for me. Some, somehow, some yeah, way. Like, Pretty much, my, mine runs like 80 to 90, and then when I'm scoped in, it usually go probably 60, I would say. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's probably about the same for me. <laughs> Something along those lines. Did you see, I don't want to dwell on this too like specifically, but did you see that there is a way to get onto the Pinewood Hotel roof? I did see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I yes. had a couple of people sending it to me. The, the, I'm not going to, I won't say exactly how that it, you do it, but... I'm sure it'll probably be patched relatively soon. But like, it's kind of weird because it's almost one of those things that you think like, hmm, that could be kind of fun to like even just have that as an option in some ways. Yes. I don't know. Like, I know it'd be kind of toxic, but it's, it'd be a little bit like, uh, I don't know. It's a little bit like weather station, like the really tall tower. Yes. Or like interchange, like the sign towers kind of thing. Like, if somebody, if people, once people know you can be up there, people will check it. And like, you're really obvious because you're just, there's not, there's no foliage. There's nothing behind you. You're just silhouetted up against the sky. I know it's very, very high up. So maybe that's probably why they don't want to do it. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. To, to be fair, actually, I was, I tried to do like, while I was writing scripts, I was like trying to min max shoreline. And um, I was like, you know, I haven't done this for a while. I was like, I'm just going to like chill here till the end of the raid and then like, go and collect some stuff. Cause like, I'm kind of bored of just like running around on stream, not fighting people and just like picking up crap. Anyway, I ended up like hearing something while I was like doing whatever. And I was like literally up on the really tall tower by um, weather station. And uh, lo and behold, there's somebody like sneaking around weather station. So I was just like, like snuck them down in the head with the org. And then there, there was their teammate as well. And like killed them too from like way up on the tower. It's like, I mean, it's, it's been so long since I ever, um, ever sat up there. Like genuinely, like I haven't been up there forever. But um I was like, oh, amazing. I got some kills from up there. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I s but yeah, you can see a long way. I saw the clip, but I, you know, I, I don't know if I know how to get up there. I think I saw something previously. And if that's the same way, then maybe I know how to get up there. But yeah, I saw it and I was like, man, that looks like fun. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just quite. I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I just wouldn't mind it being like viable mm -hmm. at least be there in some sense yeah, it's a little bit like being on like the wood sniper rock and stuff so it's, yeah you have like specific sight lines and things it's just like it's just kind of cool like i i i tried it in offline oh you did to go and see and like and and it's not like the map is not like designed to right, do that right? right so you know most lots of stuff doesn't doesn't spawn in or whatever but like if well, once you go all the way to the top like it's pretty much all like rendered or whatever and, you know it's the aerials or whatever you can't just like fall through the top of the hotel or anything like it's all the ceilings all like rendered properly and stuff so like once you're outside it's actually like kind of fine like the rest of the maps like the the culling system goes completely mental when you're like right at the top because like half the map just doesn't render but yeah which makes it like pretty bad but like once you get a bit further down then it's kind of you know it's okay because like pinewood hotel is like it really like stepped like stepped step 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 stepped all the way down and um the person who sent me the screenshots in the first place was like oh you can't actually get down, so you know, just try and do it in offline. And um, I did, but like, I, I actually managed to get down just by going down like the whole hotel, like bit, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. Um, and then the final section, you just have to like throw your bag and like jump off the bit by sparger. So yeah, it's quite yeah, it's quite it's quite interesting. I don't know, like I sort of don't mind it. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. I mean, I don't know how you would balance. Well, one thing I would say, balance wise, is one problem is like because I noticed in the clip. Cause may, all right, I mean, I saw off Chief's uh, Twitter posts, and like he didn't show how to get up there. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, he was like running near, uh, you know, Pinewood, obviously, and then he heard someone, and then he happens to see this guy like just at the top of the building, <laughs> and it's like, oh, and the and now that they're like fighting, engaging, you can like clearly hear the audio of like you know the guy on the roof. 
and I'm assuming the guy mm-hmm. on the roof can ke- clearly hear sheaf running. So there's like this weird discrepancy of vertical audio where it's like, you know, you can just hear seven stories down. Perfect. You know, as if they're right in front of you. So like if that was like changed or it was like, you know, muffled somehow or like reduced, it might be more balanced that way you could just literally hear people running like, you know, however many stories beneath you. Yeah. Like that would help. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know exactly how it works. I don't, I don't really know. But yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've literally spent so much time on streets recently just because of the high XP quests. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm pretty much done though. Like, if I go and have a look at the list that I've got left, there's hardly any. Like, most of the ones that I've got left are just annoying. So there are, there are quite a few. So there's ambulances again, which is the one that is actually fixed this wipe, where you have to go and grab the phone from one of the ambulances on the streets and then leave out of the car extract. And you have to do that all in one raid. Like previously, so last wipe when they added that quest, you could just go and get the phone and leave out of any extract, uh... and then go and leave out of the car extract on any other raid. And that's how it worked at the beginning of the wipe. They changed it halfway through. But I did it quickly because I knew that they would change it. So this one, you have to do it properly. And it's really quite annoying. I think it's one of those ones where I have to just start like being opportunistic about it and look for the phone. And if I do get it, then I'll be like, okay, let's go to the car extract and see if it's up. So wait a minute. Then there's the door. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So with the ambulances, because I did it. Yeah. I found the phone, <laughs> put it in my mm-hmm. offline stash, played some other raids, came back and then did it that way. And took the car. Yeah, you can do it like that. Oh, okay. You could do it like that, but you, but you have to like if you if you do that and then you spawn in and then you spawn in like you know, expo. Yeah. Like the chances of you getting right, the car is like right. zero. Yeah. So it's like okay, well now you know now I have to like chance it, try and get over there, or I have to just like leave quickly and just like re-roll it until I get a spawn that's like near the car. So it's that kind of, and I think you need to survive as well. Mm-hmm. So the whole thing's just like really painful. Um, so yeah, that's, that, one's, that one's quite annoying. And then there's the door, which is the one that was causing, you know, it's like the mid-wipe update kind of thing. They like added this random quest and everyone's like, oh, what's going on? And it's like the door with all the chains on it and you need the rusted bloody key. And the rusted bloody key, you know, was spawning over in the, um, the Klimov Trading Center underneath the escalator, which is like super fun and everyone really enjoyed it. Well, this wipe, they seem to have removed all of the loot out of the room for some reason. Um, you have to go and like plant two Wi-Fi cameras, one inside and one outside. But you can't plant the one outside until you've planted the one inside, it seems, which is really weird, because um, I tried. And uh, this key just doesn't spawn anymore <laughs> Yeah. in the Climbing Trading Center. I don't really know why. So they've like shafted that quest for no real reason, which is, quite, uh, which is quite silly. But you do get another key for doing the quest as part of the quest reward. You oh. get another door key. So I think the way that most people are doing it is by going onto like, you know, Sherpa Hub or like, the official discord and finding somebody with the key Mm -hmm. they do the quest and then they get a key and then they do they help somebody else complete the quest it's like one to one to one to one to one you know what i mean um but like yeah pestily put made a post saying that it's you know probably the rarest key in the game you get like thirty thousand experience for doing it which is why a lot of people want to do it because it's actually quite easy but you just don't have the key um and the worst part about the key is that you can't put it in your score container as we talked about last fight which makes it like yeah, which makes it like extra hard. So if somebody's going to do the quest, they have to just have it on them. So you kind of don't want to do it. Like doing it solo is like kind of annoying, especially again, if you spawn like theater or something. Um, where exactly is that? Where, where are you sat? Are you just in, oh, you're in Lexos. Yeah, just in Lexos in the geo. Okay. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't really paying attention. Then there's like King of the Rooftops, which I've got to do, which is eliminate 10 snipers. Well, scavs basically, like AI scavs don't spawn anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So that's great. I have like two. But out I've done of three ten. of those. Yeah, I got like three out of ten. It's like so annoying. It's like the one right um, here at the corner of Lexos. <clears throat> that, that's mm-hmm. like the only, and then the one over by the mall. I guess there's like two over by the mall, but like, dude, they're always dead. Like always dead. Yeah, I think I've shot the one on the Glimov Mall like three times. I think it's literally that one scarf. Actually, I think there was one over by. Again, you know, by the big, like the main crossroads, there's like one really high up uh-huh. on like the big main crossroad areas. One there, I killed him one time. Um, the same thing with like eliminate, you know, the H- Huntsman Administrator. That's like 15k. It's quite decent. You have to eliminate any target Pinewood Hotel. That would also be quite good. Again, if scavs spawn, yeah. like scavs do spawn there somewhere sometimes, but you have to kill like 20 targets in general. Yeah. I feel like I'm more likely to kill a PMC than I am to kill a scav. Um, then there's Caban's quest. I mean, Caban's his own problem. And then there's. Again, it's the gendarmerie kill any target with a pistol on the streets of Tarkov over at the mall, which is like, okay, well, I'm basically fighting players at the mall then because I am yet to see a scav over in there, I think. Like, maybe one. Like, last fight, there were so many, but now there just aren't any. So, like, 
these are the, those are the quests I've got left. Like I, that's why I just that's why I've moved to other maps because I feel like these ones are now no longer a good like use of like time mm -hmm. to experience ratio. I'm much better off just like banging out like two quests on shoreline simultaneously for 8k each to try and get myself to max traders. So yeah, I don't know. I, like, I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do this wipe. I really don't know. Like usually, and I I will settle down into getting lightkeeper each time because I was like you know mini kappa. You have to do like a bunch of annoying quests, but they're not too crazy. It's got its own quest line that you have to do. But I think for me, the fact that you have to like run Lighthouse so many times, I just don't enjoy Lighthouse, I have decided. I don't enjoy... Well, I, you know, I don't mind Lighthouse, but I don't like playing against the rogues. That's the thing. I don't like the rogues thing. And it's the same as like all of this other stuff, right? We've talked about it a billion times. But and people come into my chat and they're just like, oh, you know, how do you do X, Y, Z? How do you play Lighthouse? I don't, don't want to play Lighthouse. I'm like, the problem is you can't learn this organically. You just have to do the cheese strat. It's the only way to win. Otherwise, like you literally won't win. They're too OP to, for you to organically figure out what to do. Oh, there's another bug actually where, if for anybody who's looking on video. The, do you see that door thing? Are you, do you know about this one? I do know about this one, which is very bizarre. Yeah, so there's a there was a place where last wipe, the he used to spawn for the hideout, which is the hideout underneath the theater. And there was a door over in this corridor section, which is near, it's like opposite the road to Lexos. Church has got it up on screen, but for the audio listeners, yeah, it's like opposite the road. So if you ran out of the, uh, if you ran out of like, uh, which was which way would it be? If you ran out of Lexos East across the road, and then there's like the big building in front of you that kind of goes towards factory. If you then went left down into the little cubby, there's a door down there, but the door has got a texture issue, this wipe, for some reason. The wall extends and you could just run straight through the wall. <laughs> Into this like little hidden cupboard, which like used to be there. So if you knew where it was, it was fine. The duffel bag in the corner always spawns the hideout key with guarantee. And the, you know, the, the stuff in there is okay. The reason why it's not more sought after is because you like frankly don't need any keys for streets. But the best part about this place is that it's only opaque from one side. So yeah, you can see right through out to other people. I don't know if you can shoot them. I think you probably can. Oh yeah. Because it's not because <laughs> it's not an actual physical texture. Uh, so yeah, just be careful because people could be, oh yeah. And also the culling system is like broken on the boundary between the door and the, and the rest of the map, which is also not ideal. So yeah, it's another like weird bug that's appeared this way, but I don't, I don't know what that one's about. That one's really strange. That one's really strange. Cause it's like, how did like someone like, to me, it feels like, I don't know nothing. Right. But it's like, someone looked at this and be like, huh, you shouldn't be able to go in there. Let's just slap a texture over that. But they forgot to like put a barrier there like a collision barrier <laughs> so it's like yeah i don't know but maybe that's not the case maybe it's just like a weird calling issue where like this is you know cult uh, I, I, inver I don't know i have no idea no yeah clue. i don't know how they do half this stuff like i know a lot of the, the way that they do things now is they're placing stuff like automatically um because like that's how the snow worked and like there's a whole bunch of stuff that they're doing mm -hmm. like automatically which is quite cool but then you may end up with like weird issues like that when everything like re-renders or whatever I, I don't i don't know why that's happened but yeah it's very odd <laughs> but yeah jumping back to lighthouse funny right. enough i i don't mind the rogues it's the map that i just hate like i just do not like the map whatsoever like the flow is just awful to me and i you know i won't run it on too long but like I'm just, you know, because we already did plenty of that a few episodes ago, but yeah, I'm, I need one more vertex and like, I, you know, I also don't like reserve, like my tier list from like, worst to best is probably like lighthouse reserve. This is where it gets really hard after this. Um, I would probably say woods, not that. No, you know what? Scratch that. Shoreline. Shoreline's actually gone to, like dropped so far down because of like the redesign. And it's not even the redesign oh, really? that's the problem, but it's how they handled the spawns. It's like there's such oh, a tiny yeah. like both sides is just like a one big clusterfuck. And like the east side, Road of Customs, you literally spawn and like you have to like you can't just like run straight ahead like to any point of interest. You have to like path like carefully and like on the outskirts and like know the spawns like you could i i've literally spawned like on the uh like road of customs but not like at the extract but basically on like the shore like in between train and and road of customs right and i have towards road yeah. of customs and shot people in the back i'm just like dude what 
is like it's and then if you spawn at path to lighthouse you know it's the same deal i've literally i got shooter boring kills like within you know 30 seconds of the raid like it was crazy because i i spawned i looked i might have a clip actually yeah i think i do actually let me see if i can pull it up real quick because it's actually hilarious um i was doing <laughs> shooter board and <laughs> again spawn to path to the shoreline and i knew okay there's gonna be a spawn down in the swamps there's gonna be a spawn over by the village there's another spawn like up against the wall uh you know mm -hmm. on the other side like there's just spawns everywhere right so i'm like i know i can probably see someone and i happened to see someone going towards the cult house right um but i also mm -hmm. noticed that the fisherman check i think it's the fisherman check has a door that spawned shut and i noticed it was open so I'm like okay there's someone in there as well and uh, I'm trying to multitask here and pull up the recording as well, which is, you know, a difficult task for someone like me. But um, <laughs> basically, they end up getting a fight and I end up third partying, but I almost got shot. But it was hilarious because I kept missing the guy by like a millimeter because he would like turn his head just ever so slightly, but he wasn't aware of my location. So he he just didn't know, but he kept giving me like three opportunities that I missed every time. And then finally I got him on the fourth one. It was hilarious, so actually. Let's see if I can find it here. If you if you have a look for it, then I'll tell you about mine then. Because yeah. I know people have been complaining about spawns or whatever. And like I don't normally look for it because I'm usually going to do something rather than like get PMC kills mm -hmm. typically. But I had one that was just like so egregious the other day. I spawned on shoreline down by tunnel. <clears throat> But I was slightly further up, like towards village, like at the south end of the village. And uh, I was like, okay, well, I just need to run <clears throat> all the way along um, the road, basically. So I like ran towards tunnel and then up the hill. And then I hear footsteps. And I was like, oh, no. And some guy who was like kind of slow off the mark had spawned down on like the beach by tunnel while I'd spawned like village by tunnel. Mm. And I was like, oh, no. And he literally like came up out of the spawn and I just orked him. And I was like, that man is so sad right now. Because like, <laughs> it was literally like 10 seconds in. It was only because I sprinted over to the hill that I heard him in the first place. But like, we were so close together. Mm. It's like, what's the, you know, what's, there's no need for that, right? Like, there's, these things are just, they're way too close. And uh, yeah, we talked about this previously, about how they've blocked the spawns on the north eastern side of the map. So that people can't just go and like, because I think, tell me, tell me whether you think this is true or not, because I'm not okay. sure. Is the car on shoreline 100 percent. i believe so i think it is too so i think because of that they block the spawns on the northeast to stop people running into the cattle ranch thing to loot and then leave on the car immediately because i feel like you could probably do that before anyone even got to you yes but there aren't any spawns up there anymore and it's just because of that everyone's like even more cramped than they were before like i think you know if, if people want to do that then like sure they should be able to or at least like we were talking about this on a uh, stream yesterday like there should just be two groups of spawns one each side so that you have to you know that you can contest it right like if, if both people are there then you have to run in and, and contest it like yeah if you get yeah. it uncontested then fine but like the spawns dictate that it could be contested every time if people were doing that as a strategy i don't really think people are, are like doing that right in particular like yeah you could in theory and like yeah the loot is okay over there like it's fine but like people mainly are running to resort they're doing tasks like they're going to other places with like high value loot and like if you want that kind of loot like you can just go to woods like it's not i don't know i don't, I don't feel like it's that valuable to, to be there like yeah the car extract is kind of you know it's a nice thing you get fence wrap and it's nice and quick and all of that stuff but like i just don't think people would like target like spam farm that so much that like they have to remove like a quarter of the maps like spawn points for pmcs like that has such a detrimental impact on like everybody else. So you're saying there was a spawn directly north, like back by the car. Well, there used to be, right? And they all because you used to be able to get like map. the yeah, yeah, because exactly because you used to get the god spawns yeah, up by yeah. resort. But this, but sit, but since they changed it, they removed all those ones. Yes, <clears throat> and I think they should. Those put ones them back. would be the prime. Yeah, I think so too. Those would be like the prime spawns for looting that area, which is fine so long as there's you know a spawn north and a spawn east, which there were before. Yeah. And that would be okay. Like, it would be fine. There would be no problem with that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, like, I think it's probably because they thought that was too, uh, 
probably because they thought it was too easy. I mean, I'm speculating, obviously, but like, there's quite a lot of people in my chat who didn't even a didn't even realize that there was a car extract up there. Like, if you're not, you know, 100% clued in, it's kind of out of the way, and you wouldn't necessarily have even noticed if you're not a you know shoreline like a bit a big shoreline player. And then secondly, because they re-added like the rock passage, it's called like something else now, climbers, whatever. So, so I can't remember what its name is. But you do obviously need to take Red Rebel and a Paracord to do yeah. it. But between those two spawns, like, or sorry, those extracts, there's actually like loads of places to leave Shoreline now. Shoreline is probably like the least extract camp map at this point. Yes. It's got to be because... I was thinking the same. You imagine, imagine you spawn on the west side of the map. You can leave. At least, I think the only, sp- the only extract you can't leave out of is Tunnel. If you spawn over on the west, like you could, you could go out of uh, Path of Lighthouse. Yeah. You can go out of the climbing extract. You could go out of the vehicle extract. You can go out of Road to Customs. You could go out of Pier Boat, which actually works now. You can go out of the railway. I think there's like six, like six PMC extracts you can get out of. East side, like very slightly less. You can't get out of Road to Customs. You can't get out of the railroad one. But yeah, you can still get out of vehicle, the climbing one, Path of Lighthouse, Tunnel, Pier. So there's five for you. Like it's now relatively easy. Like I've used the vehicle a few times and I've used the climbing extract a couple of times as well for some of these quests, which is really good. Like it's a, a great extract to have there as like a quick exit out of resort. It makes the map, uh, in my opinion, it makes the map a lot more playable because like h- how often do you meet somebody when you leave resort on your way to extracts? Like almost never. And when you do, they're extract camping and sitting in a bush, which I've had like once or twice. And uh, it's, so that's just like bad. Whereas bad it's like okay here's the quick extract out like it's not completely safe because it's sniper scouts and stuff so you might have to like play some people but it's much closer you already did the sprint up to shoreline and now you don't have to sprint all the way out again which is quite cool yeah i mean i guess <laughs> they thought it was going to be too advantageous to spawn there because then you could go I think resort so. or um you know the, the farm but i i just like i but would i don't care right yeah. i would just rather be able to play a raid more than 30 seconds you know like <laughs> like it's yeah it sucks like it used to suck that you know prior to the map expansion you would get the god spawn and you could basically guarantee be the first in east and then you could also guarantee camp the front entrance where you do people come out through the helicopter you know yeah, it sucked, but you know, it was like everyone got a a chance to get that role. Whereas now it's like, dude, you spawn even on tunnel side. There's a spawn where you literally basically spawn practically on top of tunnel. Like you can take like I don't know twenty steps and you can look over tunnel and then you could shoot the guy. I watched Summit kill someone like thirty seconds in the raid. The guy must have been like planting his markers on the ambulance because he spawned down by the beach and he was running to the other ambulance and he kills him like 30 seconds in the rain. I'm just like, dude, that spot is so bad because <laughs> if you don't like, I don't even, I don't even know if you can avoid vision from the guy camping on top of the rock because like you would have mm-hmm. to like, you'd have to pa- path past him before he could get on top of the rock. And I don't know if that's possible, <laughs> but like, here's a, a, so I couldn't find the clip I was, I think the court recording might have failed or something, but here's a separate clip of me giving someone a 30 second raid treatment on <laughs> on reserve. And it's just like, dude, reserve spawns also sucks so bad. But this one spawn that you can get is actually really good for spawn killing people. It's this one by like the tankers. And so Oh, the tankers by the train station. Yes. Because you could go up on this staircase, which is like slightly yeah. risky, and then you just look towards the bunker, and sure mm-hmm. enough, there's someone spawns over my bunker. Oh, I see. Out. Okay. <laughs> and this guy has like a 15 second rate, dude. It's so toxic, man. Like, dude, that spawn sucks so bad. Like, I get it. And the only way I have went and haven't died yet is I go out and immediately cut right. But I'm pretty yeah, sure go around the edge of the map. Yeah, you might be seen anyway. Though, but this is the thing: I had this happen to me. Yeah, you would be seen anyways. It's so oh god, dude. Like, what are you supposed to do? I just don't like. Am I supposed to just sit there and camp? Like, I hate. I oh, I just I want to play an extraction shooter. Like, whatever comes next, I don't care who makes it, even if it's Tarkov. But like, just give me the the raid system that um the cycle had because it was just like it infinitely better than this. Like, some people have suggested randomizing spawns every wipe i'm like this is like just a temporary solution you're just putting a band-aid on a leaky pipe like it's not really 
yeah. going to change much. But people will figure out like where people right. are going to be. Right? Give them so. give them a month. The wiki will have the new page updated. Like it's just like, yeah. But yeah, like I I went I did the right path once, and I would run against the uh you know back fence going towards um st basically, mm -hmm. and I got shot at from dome. <laughs> So it's like, dude, you are so. Some of these spots are just so. Someone says they wait in bunker for five minutes. I just like, yeah. I just like, dude. I spend five minutes queuing, and then now I gotta spend five minutes like AFK. Like it's just, ah. Uh, that's why I reserve is like the second worst map, and then I would say shoreline because the spawns. Like I used to really like shoreline, but now I'm just like, it's just kind of miserable because the spawns and. I mean, there's going to be a theme with spawns. I, Woods is kind of probably my fourth least. Not because I would say it's bad in particular. It's just not my particular taste. Like, I think Woods is yeah. fine. And I actually don't know the spawns that well. So maybe that's why I don't like it or do like it as much. I don't know. but um, Yeah, I don't like Woods is. I don't think there's that many spots that you can fight people. Like right off the bat, like right. the worst one that I'm aware of, I think is over by Scav House kind of area. Like there are quite a few fights that happen there. Pretty yeah. early, like you can have somebody spawns in the corner. Like you can't. I don't think you can see each other straight away. I actually haven't yet ascertained whether you can spawn in like the outskirts area where the one person can spawn one side and one person can spawn the other side. I don't actually know anymore. I don't know if that makes any sense. But you know where the car is. I don't know if somebody can spawn like. Down and one person could spawn up by the beach. I don't. I don't know because that that used to be a thing back in the day. Because <clears throat> that used to be like one end of the map, so people used to be able to spawn there. I've never seen anybody like that. Like you can, I'm pretty sure you can spawn like attachment shack, and somebody can spawn down in the corner. That definitely can happen. Um, and you can spawn like further up, and somebody can spawn over by the beach by scav house. I'm not sure if you can just spawn like, yeah, like it's, it's funny though, unless we talk about these different maps, right? Like people are saying, well, interchange spawns are terrible and shoreline spawns are terrible and reserve spawns are terrible and lighthouse spawns are terrible. And like, I mean, there are some terrible spawns on streets, not going to lie, right? Like if yeah. you spawn, I had one the other day, although I managed to whiff it because like, I'm just bad. But like, if you spawn in Concordia basement, yes, <laughs> there's almost certainly somebody in the apartment yes. at the end. They have to come past you. There's literally no way through Concordia other than past you. You can just sit on the ramp and just wait. And I had I had Timmy McTimmy <laughs> running at the speed of light, and I was just like incapable of shooting him with my SVD because I'm just a moron, apparently. But the guy was like bleeding like crazy. We did like a little detective hunt, followed the trail of blood, and he just like ran straight into like Caban's boys at Lexos. And I was like, that was literally <laughs> the last kill I needed for a shoot for um uh for punisher six mm -hmm. and i was like come back come back and i was like sprinting this guy down and the blood trail just like goes through the front gates and i had heard some machine gun fire before and i was like yeah there he was just like naked in the doorway i was like oh for god's sake but um yeah so there's like there's the yeah, expo on streets is also pretty bad people are saying in chat that one's quite bad because like you can't get out of expo any other way like what are you supposed to do just normally when i spawn that i literally just like run the gauntlet straight across into pinewood hotel it's like the best thing that i can think to do because what are you going to do like you've either got to like roam down the shop fronts along the klimov trading center where you're gonna undoubtedly get killed right because you can't see in through the pinewood windows for some reason like it's really difficult to see in the pinewood that side and if you don't run over, then you're just like trapped in Plymouth Trading Center for ages. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like spawns are becoming like a really, really big problem. Like they've been a problem for ages, but they're a real issue. And like especially with lighthouse, like we were saying before, it almost feels like it almost feels meta to not go anywhere. Yes. For half of them, like there's um, there's a couple that keep popping up, right? And there's like the one at the back where you get the god spawn for the old god spawn for the water treatment facility and the next spawn across mm. over the little bit of water. There's that one that you see pop up on Twitter <laughs> again and again and again and again. And like if the guy who gets the god spawn for water treatment turns around, there's literally people right behind yeah. him. Like you can see you if you sidestep like three paces mm. to the left, you can see them on the spawn point. Which is insane to me that they thought like, that was like okay. Off the bat. Yeah. Like I've been killed there. I've killed people there. I've been on both ends of that. Like, it's crazy. Um, and, uh, you know, chat's bringing up so many good points right now. And spawns are worse with the snow. 
Yeah, because there's no trees. Like the trees got no leaves on them and stuff. So that's what that that's probably why it's making it like extra bad for sure at the moment. But it's 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 showcasing the problems as they exist. Yeah, right. Which is that's fine, right? That's fine. But it needs to be addressed in some way. I just don't know how they do it without reducing the number of players. But don't necessarily want to do that either. It's just like you know, maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, there's surely you've got to be a way to fit everybody on the map without it just like killing the you know the um spawns and having everyone be able to see each other straight off the off the rip i don't know i just i just think that they could take the scav spawning logic apply it to pmcs you know because i am assuming okay there's a lot of assumptions being made here but i'm assuming the player scav spawning logic well i say that (laughs) there's some flaws now that i'm gonna say this but i'm assuming that it checks within a certain radius of that spawn of any entities that are there like player entities right maybe even hopefully even ai entities right and if nothing's there, it spawns you in. Someone says nothing does it spawn. Listen, I said a lot of assumptions are being made here, but if they could craft something like that, and then you know, I don't like you. You could you could come up with whatever fake lore, you know, thing you want to do about loot respawning or whatever. Like I don't care, man. Just like have infills and and keep the raids like open you know what i mean like ah, oh, dude that's like one of the things i'm excited i know i say we're gonna talk about crazy but like just briefly mentioning they're gonna have a system where you can like just go in and out willy-nilly like it's you know like the cycle essentially like their goal is like single digit queue times like seconds queue times which is just like amazing because you know if, if you can achieve that i don't you know i'm assuming that doesn't account loading and generating stuff but just actual queuing like oh dude because sometimes like it takes like what a minute or two to like actually load the map on on Mm -hmm. tarkov but like i had one was like i was gonna i thought i got the matching but i was gonna back out it was like five minutes so i was gonna back out at six and i got in at like 550 i was like man that was such a i mean to be fair it's like you know a weekday at like 3 p.m eastern so i mean you know it's not peak hours by any means but Still, it kills me because it's like, you, you know, five minutes to get in. There's a chance I'm going to get a bad spawn. Am I going to die 30 seconds in the rip? Now I got to spend another 10 minutes, you know, queuing, uh, getting my get together. If I used a preset system and buy a Salewa, sometimes a Salewa was 40 out of uh, 400, which is like super. I hate that so much, dude. I wish the preset system was better. I mean, I could go on, but uh, yeah. just one, like, quick thing i want to mention here in the footage there's a spawn you know speaking of spawns so there's the spawn where you spawn inside pet apartments i call it or the veterinary clinic whatever and then yeah down the street past the arch there's that expo extract and there's like a building there that's got like i don't know it's a couple scav bodies two dead bodies in it yeah, yeah. there's those have been amazing by the way is like a random aside <laughs> number of class five armors i've had out of those is actually insane. i got one too from specifically from streets of scav as well which I wonder, mm-hmm. eh, yeah, maybe there's something there, but anywho, it's so weird. If you, I found this out just by happenstance. If you spawn in here and look towards Expo, if you're in like the room closest to it, it doesn't work. But if you spawn, if you move back into this further rooms, the calling gets all weird where you can see like, <laughs> so you oh. can just see PMCs running down there. <laughs> it's so broken. I mean, it's a, like I don't even know how long that is. It's got to be like three hundred meters, maybe. Yeah, it's going to be a tough shot. Oh, two hundred. Okay, that's not that far. Two fifty, okay. two hundred, something like that. It's not too bad. But yeah, just more calling spawn stuff. Yeah. Yep. So. Okay. So yeah, to round off the whole like, ran- like we've gone on a big meandering tangent here, but. To run off the whole like general conversation about like progression and whatnot, like I would normally go for Lightkeeper. I feel like I'm not going to this time. I just don't really want to run Lighthouse that much. So I'm just deciding what to do after get to Max Traders. Like I actually genuinely am not sure what I'm gonna do. Like whether I just run a bunch of like funny strategies, do some like Abney dudes type that stuff, could be fun. Like, f- fun things like that, or do like a bunch of like I don't know, like offline like random like things for people like maybe do like some sub game stuff do like hide and seek on labs and like just just, ra- just random stuff like this i'm just gonna like make up some stuff because i genuinely feel that 
as like and as a gamer it's a bit different but like as a creator i genuinely find, and as a creator that that creates primarily and streams you know as a as, a, as my minor mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i feel that <clears throat> i feel that like going for these tasks beyond 42 actually is like just detrimental to my experience and probably to my viewers as well mm. and i can do more for people and for myself by doing something more fun than trying to find the the, the you know flash drive version 3 for three days or trying to find the body of the receiver you know again like it's just I, it's, it was okay like i didn't mind doing it the first time and i didn't mind doing it the second time but because lightkeeper still basically does nothing the services that they've added for him are borderline useless and that made me a bit sad because it's just like you know i kind of wanted to sort of be at least proficient at doing the grind so that when lightkeeper became valuable i could do it but i feel now like there's just mm, no point um yeah we could even do like hardcore zero to hero like everybody it's like free for all hardcore zero to zero a uh, zero to hero on like reserve so everybody has literally nothing you got to like find all your stuff it's like a death match but everybody starts with like literally nothing it'd be like PUBG. you could do yeah? something and like, like that, set yeah. a, and like maybe like set a goal you know it's like <clears throat> no idea like last man standing or like you can only go into certain sections you know you like you sort of simulate the, the circle in some way just like just do stupid stuff like that right that would just be like funny and just interesting and like might be really really cool and like it's almost like creating your own custom game. Yeah. Like I remember, remember I was like talking to you ages ago, but I had this like crazy idea of this like ridiculous, you remember this like ridiculous hardcore scheme where everyone's playing on hardcore mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like you leave the raid and then you like take a <laughs> screenshot of what you left with and then you buy all that stuff with your actual PMC. So you need like a bunch of money on your main <laughs> character. Do you remember? Like yeah. I had this, and so you have to like keep a record of each raid and stuff. So it was like, it was too much, but like we could do like a, you know, light version of these things, things that are just like round based. So it's the same every round. Um, Mirror Hunt tournament with points. Maybe, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. But I feel like some of this stuff might be more fun to do, actually, than just, like, continue grinding the quest. Like, I've, I've done that for so long now, and uh, I think there's better things I could do. So that's, that's probably what my goal is going to be, to, like, find some more fun stuff to do. And I don't, I don't mind whether that's, like... It's probably going to be a mixture, right? It'll be a mixture of, like, fun strategies to try or, um, or just, like, yeah, random, like, offline tournamenty type things that I do with, with the community or whatever. So... Yeah, that'd be good. At, I know that you're going for cap. So what were you going to say? I was going to say, I know Ash did a uh, one back in the day when they first introduced offline co-op, which was like zombies. And he had like all the PMCs oh, like, had that. like melee weapons and they popped like SJ6s. And he had like a revolver and the revolver, like a I think. double barrel oh. shotgun. It was funny. I was like all in dorms, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's like super fun. Yeah, super super fun. And then there was, I think Axel did one, which was like Defense of the Lighthouse. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, as well. So there was like him and maybe one other person, Mm -hmm. and there was like you know, twenty viewers, whatever. Now that you can have like, because you know, when we did that testing the other day on Interchange, there was yeah, you can get like fourteen people in the same raid. If you use like the lobby system, you can get tons of people into the same raid. So it is actually quite, it is actually quite fun. I I don't know how many people you can get in offline streets. In the same I, I wonder if I could even just try that. If, you, if I go here, PMC, if I go streets, because it should be the map with the most people, right? Probably. I would think so. Next. Oh, no, I, want to go, I have to go offline, don't I? So co-op. Next. And then I go create a group. Yeah, you can get 20 people into streets. That could be quite, that could be quite cool. Yeah. And you can spawn everybody together as well. So you can be like, you can all spawn together and you could like set the boundary so that it's like quite small. Or even just like, yeah, just let people go to start with. And then you like, you, yeah, that's, that's quite a cool idea. So then, and then you like name an area. You like, you have the areas on the map, you name the area. Um, just like there's, there's so many different things like 10v10 Toz. Like, <laughs> Toz only. Like there's so much like hilarious stuff you could do. Like there's actually a lot of things. I'm like, I'm actually having fun thinking about this now. I've always sort of stayed away from this kind of stuff, but like, yeah, it could be cool. Does Arena have custom game modes? Not yet. They're, they're bringing them in soon, I think, because that would be really fun to do. But the, I think like the issue that I have with Arena, and I was talking to chat about this, like it, you don't get to play enough. Like it's not quite fast enough to get in and it's not quite quick enough between the rounds, in my opinion. Um, Because I kind of wanted to just like boot it up at the beginning of the end of the stream. So that was kind of what I had in mind. Mm-hmm. but. By the time you've like gone in, matched, someone's cancelled, matched again, 
you click accept and then someone cancels then you click accept and then it has to load the map and then you're waiting for players and then it loads in and then the announcer speaks for 20 seconds and then there's a five second countdown and it's like by the time you've done all that it's like five or six minutes like i don't like and i don't even care about it being ranked either like i I would rather it just i'd rather just play like i yeah. not, i really don't care about my ranking arena i'm not i'm not going to be a professional arena player there's like no way about that but i do enjoy the game i'd like to play that game format so I just wish that it was a bit like of a faster turnaround or one where you could just even like, yes, speed up the sort of inter round scoreboard and all this kind of stuff. I don't know. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. But like once they unlock it all so you can play, um, cause I think one of the issues with custom games, I think you can play custom games, but I don't think all the modes are there yet. And also I think you need a full lobby. I don't think you can play without 5v5. You can't just mm. do like whatever you like, which is kind of annoying. But um, anyway, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What I was going to ask you about your Kappa search is where where do you think that the bottlenecks are for going for Kappa this wipe? I mean, you can talk obviously your own experience because some stuff is like harder or easier each wipe depending on how it kind of plays out. Um, well, for context, I mean, I haven't really done a lot of Kappa stuff like. I've always kind of been like, yeah, I'll go for crap with a swipe and then like collect, start collecting a few items. And then eventually I just get like, just lose interest. I'm just like, you know, just not interested in the wipe in general. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And then, you know, it's just, it's like always just kind of, it's kind of like the Lightkeeper situation for me. It's just like, I feel like Lightkeeper is just not worth it. You know, like if he did something more interesting then yeah I'm, i might be interested in going for it but like i just don't want to subject myself to that type of stuff you know like if you mm -hmm. want to do it for like the achievement i you know i get that that's basically why i'm going for cap is like i just want to do this one thing just to be like yeah I've, i did it and then never do it again you know <laughs> like yep i'm a kappa gamer um but i would say yeah. like oh go ahead i was gonna say so how, how many bosses have you killed uh rashala that's it. Okay. Like technically with the TT as well. Yeah, I did get the TT, but I I got to get okay. two more guards. <laughs> okay. Well, that's like that's the easier part, I suppose. Yeah. So you said you you were farming Gluhar or trying to. Well, I I thought I had the Gluhar quest, but I didn't. But I was doing I was like oh. doing reserve quest and I'm like, "Oh, mm. I can like cuz that was kind of the thing, you know, like I said, I was trying to min max xp plus questing and whatnot so it's like okay i got like a handful of reserve quests let me go reserve and quest there and if i kill gluheart you know i'll get that done as well but i didn't have the gluheart quest i just thought i did because i assumed i had all the bot kill boss quests because i had a bunch of them but you mm. have to have pest control done so which is where you got to kill oh, scavs in the pond buildings and right yes i also have that one to do yeah the scavs just kind of don't path there like the ai scabs like they might path in the front and that might count but your best bet is killing player scabs which means you gotta sit there for like you know 45 minutes basically and kill player scabs um but i got that done you know eventually but you know like i said i gotta still kill gluhar but i think i think you know the, the boss hunting ones are pretty annoying like especially killa like i kind of hate how they done killa now there's just mm. like he has probably like Dude, I don't know, 20 spawns? Like, it's... It's a lot. <laughs> like, Gluhar has five, which is a lot for a boss, you know? Because you think, like, uh, Rishala's got, like, three, you know? Yeah. Um, Santar's got, like, three as well. You know, may may maybe three and a half, because he can sometimes be an admin. Um, who else? German's got one, obviously. <sighs> Uh, who else? David Caban, just the one. Yeah, and then that what, uh, Kalani was the other dude's name. Yeah, Colin Ty. Can he spawn in either the Klimov Trading Center or the Military Academy? I feel like that's yes. I think that's the case. The way it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've not seen him at all yet. <laughs> I've sort of seen him. I've seen him once dead as a scav. Like I was a player scav. I seen him. Saw him dead. Uh. And then. Me and a buddy were trying to path through the mall, and he was there, and he absolutely obliterated him. And <laughs> I was doing the phone quest, so I had no interest in doing that. But I don't even think I have the quest to kill him. I think you have to kill Caban first, and then you get him. I'm not. I'm not totally oh, sure really? what's I, going yeah, on I'm not there. Sure. 
Um, let's see. So yeah, there's the. I mean, there's the. Bosses. Oh yeah, Tagila. <laughs> yeah, Tagila. I gotta do that. Which he has like. I one. still, I still have not killed Tagila. I have not seen him. I haven't seen him either. This wipe. I play like a reasonable amount of factory. Hmm. I've literally not seen the guy. Like it's great. I've been killed by him once as a scav. Yeah, and I haven't, I haven't really seen him. I mean, I haven't really been looking. I just, you know, it's like the only yeah. factory quest I got, so I never really feel like doing that. You know, yeah, it's not like yeah. really gatekeeping anything. At least I don't think. Um, sixteen k. Like it's yeah, you know, it's okay. But... Yeah, I would say the big gatekeeper right now is Vertex because I just absolutely hate Lighthouse. Like I only need one more. Like maybe I'll get on reserve, but I'm not really a reserve player. Like I don't really know spawns like that. Like, I just don't find reserve that enjoyable, so I don't really have an interest in doing that. I got a. What is it about reserve that you don't like? Is it the uh, extracting situation, or just kind of the way that the map plays? Um, it's <laughs> yeah, really a culmination thing. You got the extracts, you got the spawns, you got just how you traverse the map. It just doesn't feel good. Like you have to move from building to building, and the way the audio works is like you can't really hear that well them on the inside but they can hear you fine on the outside mm. you know what i mean because there's like an a there's like yeah. an ambient noise difference like because when you're inside it's like yeah. a different ambient noise which i feel like is better and versus outside because outside you have like a more windy you know i don't know it just sounds different and so there's that so you gotta run from building to building hoping to god no one sees you from like any of the other buildings, from dome, from anywhere else, you're not getting shot at, and then you run inside, and then it goes from like super bright white to pitch black, you know, and you just hope the god someone isn't sitting watching the entrance, like you know, it's just, I, it, then it's like okay, you got the underground, fine, but like, uh, I mean, it's just like it's okay, it's kind of got the same things, it's dark, you know, there's a there's a lot of different angles, a lot of different rat spots you gotta watch out for. I had a <laughs> I had a raid where I ratted. <laughs> I did some stank red shit, gig. I, I, uh, so you know the D two barracks, not the D two barracks, the the hermetic door barracks, the where the underground uh, is, and you got like the cages. Blue heart can spawn, like the the where the alarm extract uh, that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, I was I've been going down there because I need Ledex. Like apparently, I need Ledex is. I need three. One for the therapist quest and two for get the crisis. Them in well, there's a bunch of medical crates, which they can spawn okay. in there, but, you know, it's probably like 0.001% chance, you know. But there's like 10 or so. I mean, there's a, there's a crap ton down there, but anyways, it's a fairly highly contested area because Gluhar can spawn down there. There's this quest down there to kill scavs, you know, etc. So I went down there and, you know, I was like slow walking him. It's really dark. I got, I'm also doing silent caliber, so I got to silence uh, 1553 or 155, um, and then I see someone I get shot at, and I had killed a PMC previously, so I had an M4, took some shots, whatever, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go flank these guys, because there's, like, you know, three different ways to get down in there, you know, or technically before, the, the two ramps, then you got the two little side entrances, one from the Red Tower, mm -hmm. and one next to the K buildings, or whatever, so I went towards the, I think I took the K, no, I took the Red, I went in the Red Tower, went down underneath, and as you go down in there, uh, I noticed there was like uh, you know down the stairs that leads into the under underground part. I noticed there were some barrels in the back, and there's a little cubby back there. I was like, hmm, I bet I could hide back there. And they're probably gonna path this way, you know. Like at least that's what I would do. I'd usually prefer to go out the red gate side. I guess it's kind of a fifty fifty. You could go out the other side near the the bunkers. But anyway, so I threw my backpack down back there, <laughs> crouched back there, you know, put my head down and. Sure enough, I hear one guy path from me. I'm like, okay, that's one. I, you know, I'm pretty sure there was a three man um, or more. So then I heard the other two coming. And so I pop up and shot them both in the back. I murdered the first guy with a headshot. The second guy just blasted and then jumped out of the corner and, you know, reloaded, shot the other guy a few times, didn't kill him. I thought I would try flanking again. So I, I had this genius idea where I was going to go with the M4 because it had a, um, had a scope on it. That's going to go out back in the underground all the way up the mm -hmm. ramp and look from the ramp into the red building mm -hmm. from there, sort of like across the trains. 
So I did that, but the problem was, A, I had to kill a million scavs, because as soon as you leave the area, the scavs just, like, respawn. Because when they left, the scavs all respawn. So I had to kill a bunch of scavs. So I made a bunch of noise. He probably knew what I was doing. And then, once I got to the ramp and I look in there, it's just, like, pitch black. And this is another grievance oh. of mine, is, like, I don't know why every building, like, once you're past, like, 50 to, like, 30 meters, it just goes from, like, you can kind of see inside to, like, pitch black. And it's so annoying because you, you can't, like, you just, I, I, it's, it's so backwards to me. It's like, you feel like when you're in a building at a window looking out that you're, like, really exposed. But in reality, <laughs> as long as they're not, like, within 30 meters, you're, like, invisible. No one can see you. You know, so it's like because it's just like a dark shape on a dark background. It's just like it's completely pitch black. <clears throat> it depends on the window, though. This is the problem, right? It does. I think the <laughs> I think the sun position does have something to do with it, but yeah. it doesn't help that much. Like it used to be, way back in the day before they made this change. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but like pre inertia, pre troll troll, practically speaking, you could like shoot from like uh, on shoreline into resort into the windows and see like i've gotten shooterborn kills that way i would be like all the way back by the you know power line near sniper rock looking into the mm -hmm. windows of people fighting other people you know and then snipe a guy you know um whereas now it's just like absolutely no way you can ever see inside there like you're you're kind of lucky if you can see him on the balcony Honestly, because it's a little shaded there from the shadows, but especially inside, it's just like pitch black, which is like super annoying because it's like I don't know some some positions just feel like if the guy's there, you just can't you just can't do anything about it. You know, like for example, someone's in dome, like inside the building, looking out the window, you just can't see them. Like <laughs> they're just invisible, dude. Uh, so yeah, um. But what I was going to say, the, the Ledex is probably a, a gatekeep. And then the one that I'm kind of like pretty worried about is getting test drive or not test drive. Um, what is it called? Psycho sniper done. Oh, yeah. Because I, I haven't I didn't really, like there's a lot of like they made some changes to quests that I really like. But I don't remember this being. What's Psycho sniper? Is that five in a raid now? Five without dying. Five with a bolt yeah. action. Oh, OK. Five bolty kills. There's no headshots. Just bolty just kills. kills. But it used to just be yeah. sniper skill, if I'm not mistaken, right? It was, yeah. Yeah. Which this changes. And now it's both. It's, you know, it's pretty challenging. This changes everything. Yeah, because... Yeah, people normally do this and talk of Shooter 8 together, I think. Oh. See, I, I don't... Uh, what some people have been doing, what some people do is they go onto Factory and they get two kills with a bolty and then they go to other maps. Yeah, that might work. So you just like you just you just roll the dice, roll the dice, roll the dice until you get two kills, and go like with a VPO with APM or something, and just like try and one tap people, and then and then you go okay, now I need three more. I'll go to woods or I'll go to the outside of shoreline or whatever. Um, yeah, it's funny. Um, it's it's funny actually. Like for that quest, it's probably almost best to play. Like I, I was like I've been sort of toying with. Um, it's like there's a weird place though. So the Tarkov is a really strange game because if you were just playing the game to play the game, mm -hmm. you would do things very differently to the way that we all play in the first place because of like we're all probably questing for one reason or another or doing something that we would rather not be doing. But without the quest, we probably wouldn't be playing at all. So it's kind of yes. like the game's kind of weird <laughs> in that way. And uh, there's a guy who so. I um we talked about overswing last week and I put this calculator in from my Discord. There's like a bunch of people doing load of science in the Discord. In the SVD video, I linked to a overswing calculator that was made by Space Monkey, who is one of the guys who's been helping with a load of testing and stuff. And he's like looking into quite a few things scientifically, which is, you know, I, I appreciate and it's is pretty cool. So there's like a bunch of like testing on the Discord that was going on. Like he had like a load of data and he was like Asking people, someone who had a GPT-4, I think. They have like a GPT-4. Oh, the grenade sub. launcher. He was like, no, no, like chat GPT. Oh. But, and uh, he was asking them to ask it to like model the data. Because he was like trying to fit like a mm. 3D, it was like a 3D curve to this data. Mm. And he was like trying to trying to fit it. So he ended up like doing a few different different ways, but came to the formulas like that way. Okay. As like an estimate. Like they're not perfect, but they're good enough. 
Anyway, the way that he plays is like we had a big long conversation on Discord at one point, but he doesn't really like quest per se. He just like plays the game. He's like one of the few people that I have run into mm-hmm. that like just plays the game. And he, the way that he plays the game, um, it's fascinating. It's actually quite fascinating. He plays the game to like what's what's he targeting? There's a couple of things he's targeting. One is like survives, like survival rate. Okay. And the other metric that he targets is um, PMC kills per raid, hmm. which is really interesting because um, chat was asking who this is. This is Space Monkey. He's in my, in my Discord, and I've spoken to a lot recently. But there was like, yeah, there's a whole conversation about this because like he had some crazy stats. And he had some quite like, not necessarily controversial, but quite like strong opinions about the way that people play the game and stuff. And um, I was just interested and, you know, like, What's the what's the word? Like I was like I was like I honest honestly was like saying, you know, genuine question, like kind of like let's see your stats, like what do your stats look like? You know, we and they end up in this like crazy conversation about like how he plays. And um he plays the game in a way that I've like literally never seen anybody play before. It's like super strange. Cause he doesn't like doesn't really quest. He's literally just looking at these metrics of like survival. Like he's playing it like for real. Um and he has like some prior military experience. And uh yeah, so he's like looking at survival rate and like PMC kills per rate. He's like, you know, anybody can just camp and get you know, a billion survival rate and like a bunch of PMC kills, but it's like, how effective are you at like killing mm. players and like actually hunting players down in, in each raid? Do you have to like, you have to move and well, be patient when, you know, patient enough not to die. And any, but anyway, so he like, he runs this like really bizarre kit, which is like what kind of intrigued me. And he's got, he normally uses the SVD and he runs the SVD alongside a, I think it's an MP5K with a flare. Oh Yeah. So it's that kind of strategy, right? Mm-hmm. Then the class four, like CQ, whatever it's called, the atomic mask thing. Yes. Which oh, he just wow. buys He's... off the fleet for like five hundred k. Okay. Like his, like, like his, his, his loadouts are like are like a million rubles. Yeah. But he goes, he, he lives for like literally like twenty six raids in a row. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter because he's just like, well, I never need to make that much money because like I just use the same loadout again and again and again. It was like, it was like so weird. I was like, I've never seen anybody play like this. Um, so it was like, yeah, it's like. Really, it's just really fascinating, like genuinely really fascinating. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we've got like he built that like overswing calculator, mm-hmm. which was which was super super fun. Um, and what, where was I going with this? I can't actually remember what what were we talking about originally. I've like gone off on like such a random tangent here. I can't remember what we were talking about because we were talking about psycho sniper. <laughs> uh, I also have goldfish brain, so <laughs> I don't. Know. What was he even talking about? Oh yeah, so for psycho sniper, you kind of need to play like that. Mm, yeah 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 that was the whole point that was the whole point of the conversation you basically need to play like that so you know you play like you and you do all and this is the thing that you do all the things that we know that you should probably do if you just want to kill as many players as possible and die as little as possible i think like i think i don't know i think we're so used to playing the game in the way that we play it so when we come to these tasks, we don't change our playstyle enough, me included. Like when you get onto some of these quests, it literally should be like, right, rut, like moving off the spawn <laughs> is like truly terrible. And you're going to be in like 50-50 coin flicks half the time. So you just have to wait for five minutes. And then you've got your like spotter with the thermal on it. Then you've got the big gun that actually allows you to do the killing. Obviously, you need a bolty for Psycho Sniper. So you probably have to use like DVL, um, you know, DVL or like M700, like modded or whatever it is. And and do it like that. Because like the idea is that you can't really die with that quest. And like, yeah, obviously you want to get kills too. So you need to be putting yourself in a position to to get those kills. But I just it's one of those things. I feel like we as a collective community don't shift our playstyle enough. We just go like, oh, I'm just gonna I'll just play this quest where I have to survive all my raids and kill five people in a row, but I'm just gonna do what I normally do and just play it with a bolty instead. Does that make sense? Like it was I don't know, it was it was almost like it was almost a bit of a wake up call, like seeing how he does stuff because i was like i can see why you do all these things and it totally makes sense and if like money's no object these are the things that you would probably wear Mm -hmm. um i just say i just quite enjoyed his commitment to the to the bit Mm -hmm. like he was doing like testing in raid to find out which armor was the most concealed in the snow (laughs) when you're like lying down and like camping people so he was like you know the protection is kind of whatevs like obviously it needs to be like maneuverable but like if you're looking at me, which one is going to cause you to not see me the most? Yeah. Which is like really interesting. So he ended up going for, because he was like, oh, I think that the, yeah, the Osprey is like really good. The Osprey protection is really good. 
but it doesn't really work in the snow. You're better off with a Gen 4 Assault. Because <laughs> it's like more white, like fits more into the, like into the bushes and stuff. I was just like, yeah, it's just cool. It's like, that's kind of how you should probably play this stuff. But like, it's, it's difficult to change your whole mindset literally for like one quest. Yeah, it, you know? it can be. Like we, we, a lot of us just play Tarkov on autopilot a lot of the time. At least it's easy to do that. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. Just sometimes the quest you gotta do is just like not fun. Like I did, I did bullshit the other day, which is just like, it's complete bullshit. You know, like if it's a perfect name. Whoever came with that name is keen. 10 out of 10, but um, for those who don't know, you have to, like, you can't kill any scavs on customs. You have to go plant a SV-98. You have to get a flash drive from the trunk of a car on the customs bridge. And you have to plant a roller. All in third-story dorms on, like, the top floor in the lobby near some trash bags for, like, you know, a minute or so. I think each one's, like, 20 seconds or something. This is too bad, but it's just like you can't kill scavs. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna go night. You know, maybe it'll be fine. Um, turns out there's like a scab by the entrance, so I have to like pray to God he doesn't armpit me and just run past them. You know, it's just like it's it's a dumb quest. And then like I don't know if you can die. I think what you plan and all, you can die and it's fine as long as you plan everything. I think. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, you can die. Yeah, but you can't you can die as long as you don't you kill just any can't scabs. Kill a scab. You can't after you complete it like god forbid you you know you die hey that's fine but you kill a scab oh no 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 you know so yeah it's there's just like everyone's definition of fun is gonna be different but for me like fun is not the quest it's like what the quest brings and that's either like the progression you're unlocking or the engage like the scenarios it provides like some quests that it, like it's kind of why i like shoreline and the early white because you actually get an opportunity to like have these one-off engagements that's not the resort late white because late wipe it's like you know resort 24 7 pretty well much um occasionally you know some other quests that you're doing i guess maybe you know kappa or whatever but they have kind of changed that up a bit because they say that now I feel like a lot more quests are more relevant outside of like Kappa or Lightkeeper or whatever because they've put in different progressions. Like, for example, I think um, Capturing Outpost, you unlock SP6 for the 9x39 caliber. I think that's true. Um, I'll go and check. I, I can't, I actually don't know. I didn't even look it up this way. You know, there's like revision on Lighthouse to get you M80. So, I mean, there's there's like, you know, things yeah, to do right. but it's just like is this actually fun you know that's like for me the fun in tarkov is like you go in you loot stuff you you get valuable stuff that you can then use now or later to like enhance your progression you know that's the fun for me and like yeah. the fun gets sucked out whenever it's like well, i have a bazillion rubles and now i'm just buying cases to hoard more loot you know it's just like why am I even going into raid again? It's like, why, why am I, you know, it's like death is meaningless. Yeah. These are the things that's like, that sucks. Yeah. See, like, I don't really mind, I don't mind bullshit. Like I've, I've never actually had a real big problem with bullshit. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people say that, you know, solo bullshit is like so hard or whatever. Like I've always done it solo. I think I failed it. Like the, the last time I failed, it was maybe like five wipes ago. Like I think I've done it first try every single wipe for some reason. I don't think it's that hard necessarily. Like you just take some flashbangs and like do the thing, but it is quite like, you know, just like squeaky bum type quest, right? Where so I actually sort of don't mind it. And also it's like I can still kill PMCs. So like I'm kind of like playing against the AI, but the AI is not necessarily that difficult. Like I find, I don't think it's necessarily too bad. Like it is it is genuinely the Balti ones that kill me because I'm just like, I don't want to play with those guns. Like every time I'm in those fights, I'm just wishing that I didn't have this weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just I just wish I didn't have this weapon. I would like rather get the kill than do the quest. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, I, I just hate using them. I just feel that, like, I, I, and I, it's just, it's also because I'm just not that good at using the bolt action. So when I inevitably miss, I'm just like, well, now I've like, I've lost my one chance to do this yeah. and they're never going to reappear again. And it's like, okay, like, all right, fine. I get like one chance every like second raid. So it's like an hour and a half to get like each chance to get one, to, to do the one shot 
and you have to like Esther as they're like running sometimes they don't stop and you're like well i'm just gonna have to take a shot so you take one shot and then that's it they're gone forever and it's like god damn it yeah like, i literally this wipe i have well i did actually try doing some you know i've been trying to do tarkov shooter part four and uh i literally have one i have one kill for it and i have one shooter born in heaven which is that one kill and i literally haven't had any other headshots with the sniper rifle i tried a lot i actually did try quite a bit and i just can't i can't do it i just cannot get the hits on just, I, I don't know what it is can't make it work this way and this is like another reason why i'm like definitely no to kappa and like probably no to lightkeeper because i think you have to do talk of shooter seven for that it's like dude i can't do talk of shooter four so <laughs> you know like I, I don't know i'm like i don't want to pick up the bolt here again i just i really don't want to so it's that's it for me i think that's it for me yeah it's pretty suboptimal um because i mean the other unfortunate thing which just ties back to what we were talking about earlier is most like your highest chance of opportunity is going to be if in the first couple of minutes of the raid where pmcs are moving to their destinations and that way you can snipe them because if you wait too long then all the pmcs are gonna leave the raid and you're just gonna be left with scabs you know so like you have to like actively play the spawns and then chase the shots and then like you said you get like one maybe two opportunities if you're lucky um it's challenging but i mean yeah you, you definitely have to like you definitely have to enjoy it i think because it is it, it can be pretty like lighthouse really almost killed me giga like it almost killed me that one because i was doing punisher 4 and shooter born and it was just so soul crushing because like yeah the spawns and everything and it's like yeah you get few opportunities to see some pmcs it's just i don't know it's yeah it's tough yeah i mean at least uh, at least like on lighthouse you actually have the sight lines to do it and it's kind of the map for it i suppose but but half of them are always like running to the yeah the you know road camp and i just the spawns are so bad too. It's like you you actually like this is the one map you like have to learn the spawns on, in my opinion, because if not, you were you absolutely super screwed. Mm-hmm. So talking, I mean Baltis, right? Baltis are bad anyway. Generally. Like, yeah, you have to use them for the quest, but they're quite bad anyway. But what do you think about Semi Auto? Um not after using the SVD for a while, I don't think it's that good. <laughs> yeah, it does feel great. I mean, this this SVD is probably very similar to your build that I got up on screen. It's got 140 recoil. Mm -hmm. And I am yeah. noticing, like, it It kind of feels like I'm using a bolt action rifle the way I'm playing it, because I'm going for precision headshots. And it doesn't, you know, that works out not, <laughs> not always in my favor. Like, I've been doing a lot of interchange with this, uh, which is probably going to do today. And it's just about, you know, I just... Are you doing Punisher 6? Yeah, I'm still on it. I only got 8 out of 15. Um, so yeah, I gotta finish that up. But anyways, it's... um, Yeah, it doesn't feel, like, good. Like, especially the shotguns, I noticed, doing the shotgun quest. Um, even early wipe, I was using the Sega shotgun for a bit. And it felt pretty bad, like really bouncy is the way I would describe it. Like you shoot, you get like one, maybe two shots where the recoil is like, you know, vertical. And after that, it starts to become extremely bouncy. Same's true with the shotguns, but with the shotguns, the caveat there is if you use any, you know, round that increases the recoil, like Magnum, then it becomes like ridiculously uncontrollable like i i tried magnum for a bit and i was like uh-uh like piranha all the way <laughs> yeah i was like full-on piranha 153 which felt like the thing is it felt the same to me as it used to which is an indirect nerf because all the other full auto stuff feels so good in comparison but when i was using like the vpo 209 with apm it felt pretty bad with the svd it felt pretty bad it's like i'm yet to have like a good experience with semi-auto at the moment it's just the way that the full auto recoil is, I think I'd just rather have those guns in general. Like, I, I lean that way anyway as a player. But now it's just, you know, God, I don't know. I, like, I haven't tried the SR25 or any yeah. of those for the RSAS, but I just feel like, especially for the RSAS and like the M1A, I think that those guns are also super heavy. So it's like, well, your arm stamina sucks. 
Like it's quite hard to get like decent ADS speed. You know, you can like you can really like whip up some of the other weapons in ADS extremely quickly. Like, yeah, they're gonna still be good for long range shooting, of course. You know, you've got especially over like two hundred meters or whatever, because they've got big chunky rounds, they don't have much drop on them. You know, lots of damage, so the damage drop off doesn't matter too much. But yeah, I don't know. For just like general play, I feel like it's very much a SMG and probably assault rifles patch for me. But the SMGs they do fall off. Like I do like the MPX. I've been using that quite a bit early wipe. But I have moved over mainly to the ARs now. Just because they reach out a little further, you know, to the point at which I, I'm not questioning whether my AP six point three is gonna get a headshot at like seventy meters. Um I mean they they have their place for sure. <clears throat> but I am I'm enjoying ARs a bit more. You said to me beforehand, before the before the cast we started, that um, Landmark had made some comments about semi-auto. What exactly were those? Were those on stream or something? Because like I hadn't heard. Well, I hadn't heard that. It wasn't about semi-auto as a particular. It was actually just about like the recoil. Is that recoil? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it was just kind of like in passing in a video. I think he's using like the Val, and it's just kind of this idea like he was doing a lot of this like uh the the, the spam fire thing um mm -hmm. where you just like spam mouse one best way to describe it and you kind of get like within that range where the recoil's not it's like fighting to like start going it's, yeah. it's like you're fighting within the apex to keep it within the like before it hits the apex basically um and he made some comments about like you could you know probably macro and like that's definitely you know illegal slash bannable, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, because there's a very big difference right between the first like five shots and then the full auto spray pattern afterwards. So you you kind of want to be keeping it within that at all possible, if at all possible, unless you're using something like an SMG. Because I was looking again at the MPX and um, the P90 and some of these guns and the MP5 SD, which are. 32, 35, that, that kind of recoil, and like the full auto spray it doesn't really matter yeah. on those because it's still like the circle is so small that it's still like kind of okay. Um, but on some of the more chunky weapons, like it does matter for sure. Yeah, no, definitely. Like if you're in like the 30s, I don't think it matters all that much. Um, yeah. What have you built there? Is that a SA? It's a MDR 308. It's a MDR. Yeah. What recoil is that? What does that start off at? I think I'm Probably just about 80s, able to buy those. I had a guess. I think I just, yeah, I think I just did the quest because you have to do, it's one of the wet jobs or one of those other ones, mm -hmm. I think. So. That was kind of it, really. Just like if you stay within that, which I've been doing a lot more, just like spamming the, like trying to not full auto, but just a lot of, you know, spamming effectively like single fire. But it's not, you know, it's like a very fast single fire. Um, I don't think it's like, you know, it's, it's weird too, because I've heard a lot of people talk about the Mutant and the MDR, or not the MDR, the uh, RD not being so good. I think I have one somewhere that I got off a player. I've genuinely not used them yet. I used them either. I mean, it's, I don't know. It's, I, I'm like, I haven't really had the freedom, the luxury of like picking what gun I want to <laughs> use. <laughs> All these... Which bolt action will you use today, Mr. Church? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, don't have that luxury just quite yet, but eventually we'll get around to it. I think the issue is the way that the new armor system functions, having, you know, the reason why people used to move up to those, those weapons is because BP was extremely good against class five. It still is extremely good against class five, but it's not really necessary anymore. You know, you can hit headshots more, way more easily than you could previously. Beforehand, you were just aiming center of mass and just punching through, you know, the gazelle, the, you know, tactic, ACPC, like whatever it was that people were wearing. Like, whereas like now the plate area is just so little, you, it doesn't really justify the increase in recoil that you get from using those big guns. Plus like, I guess the rarity and the scarcity of that ammo. Plus like, as what I talked about last week, right? We were talking about the, like some of the best guns or some guns to use last time. And it's like, you kind of just want fire it, right? You want to just like roll the dice. You know, it was sort of the issues that we had originally when they were talking about implementing the system in the first place is that it increases the, the randomness and the inconsistency of the shooting system in general. So, you know, the player outcome of that, you know, if you're looking at it as a random system, you say, okay, well, every, every second shot, let's say I hit them somewhere that they don't have a plate, 
well, what's the best way to kill somebody? Okay, well, it's just going to be to shoot as many bullets as I can, to get as many chances as I can with a 30 pen round that's not going to hit the plate. So I, I don't know. I, th- I feel that's why like they've really fallen out of favor. A lot of people just don't like the recall on them and it doesn't justify... The recall doesn't justify the way that the new armor system works because you don't need PP, BP, these kind of rounds yes. anymore to kill players that are wearing full meta gear. Yeah. So it kind of feels a little pointless. And the fire rates are pretty low. You know, you'd rather use... I don't know. It's one of those weird things where you almost feel like you'd rather use a vector with PST than you would like an RD with BP. Because it's, you know, 600 RPM versus 900. Mm. Is the BP really going to help you? Well, sure, if you hit the play, okay. But like the recoil is higher. The amount of bullets that you actually throw down the range right. is a lot lower. And you can kill somebody in two shots in the armpit with the vector anyway. <laughs> yeah. And the headshots are easy to get. So those headshotting guns, even things like the MP9N, which are used a little bit on factory, those headshotting weapons are like way more powerful because all you have to do is now hit them in the neck as well. It's That's like anywhere on the head and the neck and anywhere around the plate. Like there's also the little gap there too. So it's like one shot to the face, one shot to the neck, two shots to the little gap around the chest bit. Like it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of crazy. And so, yeah, I just don't think those guns are really anywhere near as like good as they were. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, especially before, I mean, you would just get BP, and that was kind of the thing. You could just like basically ignore class four armor and have a fifty percent chance to effectively ignore class five armor. Yeah. Whereas, because of the weird damage threshold, right? It was like if you ignore it, if you roll twice and ignore it twice, then they just die. They die. Yeah. Because the damage mitigation didn't make enough of a difference to stop the two tap with BP, which is why it was such a turbo crazy bullet. But now, yeah, it's like, is it is it worth it? Like, yeah, they'll still die in two shots, but you can do that same thing with other weapons that have much lower recoil. I think that's the point, right? Like previously, if you, I mean, cause it's just the whole thing has shifted. If you were looking at the RD with BP before, it's like, okay, well, I can hit them anywhere in the torso area <coughs> or the head and they will die. Whereas if I've got an MP5SD, with AP 6.3, I have to hit them like strictly in the face. I have to hit them in the eyes or the jaws, and that's it, because they're wearing a ULAC and like a TAC tech. Whereas now the situation with the RD is the same, but the recoil on the semi autos, like the MP5 SD and the MPX, is like the, 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 the difference between them has been very little. Like the complaint that we used to have of the system right. was like a mutant would have the same recoil as an MPX. Whereas now the mutant is like where it probably should be. The MPX is like zero recoil now. Same with like the uh, P90, same with the MP5SD, all of these ones. But now the area that you can get a kill in is like, well, the, it's, it's easier to talk about the area that you won't get a kill in, <laughs> which is like if somebody's wearing meta yeah. gear, it's now like this square and like maybe the ears top and nape. But it's like, okay, I can still kill them in the eyes, in the jaws, now the throat, round the top, round the sides, Anywhere underneath the arms, like it's just like it's huge. Like the that power difference has just gone crazy. And then combined with the recoil difference too, it's um it's really like rebalanced a, it a lot. Yeah, that's a perfect some way to sum it up because yeah, previously you didn't have all those extra hit zones. Um mm-hmm. yeah, I mean SMGs are I think it's good. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's good on balance. Like I've I've the gun variety has been really good this wipe too. I mean, the yeah, the variety. I've seen loads of people use all sorts of stuff. Variety has been expanded. I just, I, it just <laughs> feels like there's something wrong that we're unlocking mutants and they're not being used at like these late stages. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, you say late though, but we're not really there. I would say the vast majority of the player base is still using class four. Like I haven't killed many people wearing class five yet. Like. I'm working my way into it. I'm probably wearing a class five on the front every raid now. But I think the tar- the real test is going to be as we go into the next like next month and the month after once lots of people wearing class five. I still don't think it's going to be, you know, a crazy difference because obviously we're talking about people upgrading that plate at the front from four to five. We're not talking about the whole armor and that and all this stuff. So it's only going to have a small difference. But that's really where the value of those other weapons will come in. Um, so I'm not, I don't know. And like, yeah, I'd like maybe those weapons will fall off. Maybe the MPX and those other guns won't feel as good in like all situations when people have got 
higher strength levels, they've got you know the more incentivized to take two side plates plus class five front and back, or maybe even class six. You know, I, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. But like, I feel that those other guns work well now because everyone's still using class four, and a lot of people are wearing class two soft armor still. So you could just AP six point three them like super easy. Yeah, I don't know because I mean. But that's the thing, right? They're not real. It's not like you're picking AP six point three to go through class four. You're picking it to hit their weak spots, whether that's face or whatever. And then yeah, this is true. And then the weak spots have only increased, and you get more chances because the higher rate of fire and the lower recoil. Whereas, like if I wanted to buy an RD, I think I could buy an RD now. I did the gunsmith. I think it's the gunsmith. I have to pay skier like a hundred thousand rubles. Right? It's neat. Sometimes the traders just do not load. I've had that issue. Because you're just stuck. Yeah. Sorry, it's the <laughs> mutant. Let's say I want to buy a mutant. It's, it's 140k uh, back in there. Nice. And then it's like, well, I want to put in good ammo. So now I got to craft BP. Do I even have the craft? I don't know. I don't even know where you get it. But then, you know, you got to do the quest to get the craft. And the craft, you only get like maybe 120 for like six hours. Isn't too bad. Which I've been, I've been crafting uh, the 9 mil PMB. And been stocking up to run that one day, but anyways. Oh, what well, PVP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wanted to try that. I mean, that stuff is that stuff is pretty good. Yeah, especially now. But you do, you know, you do all that. You spend all this money, and then it's like, what? Now you can like maybe go through class five plates, or I could just buy an MP5 for like you know fifty <laughs> k. Maybe suppress it, and then I can just buy the ammo straight away from Peacekeeper every reset for like two hundred and forty rounds, or however you know however much it is. Like I don't know, it just seems like it's yeah, it's a kind of like a similar problem as we had previously, but just slightly different. In that you know previously, uh, what was probably like a similar thing we would have. Well, isn't it just the same? Isn't it what you were just saying? It's just like the SMGs were pointless because you couldn't, you, there, were, there was such a small area that you could kill people through. And now we've gone from that to like, now you can kill them everywhere except this little bit. So that's why it's like swung from one to the other. Yes, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like how previously it's like, I could spend all this money on a, you know, very nice gun, you know, tricked out, or I could just run the SVT and like, Two tap someone, you know mm. what I mean? It's kind of, kind of like that. Not really, you know, but similar in that it's like, I know what you mean. And the same kind of feels like armor. Like I never really feel like I'm making any meaningful choices of armor. Like when I do, something goes awry, and it's very frustrating. <laughs> you know, it's like I I bring out the osprey with the class three, you know, protection, and then the the plates stacked in classics and then you know i get head eyes or or whatever happens you know just it doesn't the dice do not roll my favor or i i i yeah, i know what i do i i take my time and interchange slow walk past second floor and there's a guy sitting inside uh emercom you know the there's this little medical unit inside interchange on the second floor uh, not ultra med yeah. on the opposite side. It's across from the furniture store. Not again. This is on second floor. Oh, kind of like on idea side. Probably only you know two percent of interchange rats will know what I'm talking about. But there's this green Emercom like pharmacy that's hardly anyone knows about. It's super obscure. It has like two med cases, some like maybe a PC, maybe some loose spots. And there's a guy sitting in there, and he shot me in the back of the head. I was like. And I like slow walked up the escalators, you know, basically slow walked. I didn't crouch walk the entire way, but I was, you know, like slow walking because I thought I heard movement over by the furniture slash donut. Anyways, it's just like, who, like, what was he doing there? Like, uh, I was just like, man, I just got super dark out there. Yeah, it is nuts. I was like, I was literally, while you're talking, I was just building a meta mutant, like a min recall mutant mm. to see. And I think this is it, right? The way that they've changed the attachments, like the lowest recoil you can physically get to is like 69. Nice. But <laughs> I think that's the problem, that all of the old like hidden stats have gone away, as far as I can tell. Most of them, yeah. Because they, they don't mean anything anymore, the hidden stats, right? Convergence isn't a thing because there's no pulldown. So vertical recoil is basically the thing. Yeah. Because 
I, I just I think vertical recoil pretty much dictates the entire system now. I think as so. far as I can tell. Um, because Which it I mean, dictates it the did distance between always, each. But... It did like it did before, but it was like vertical recoil combined with the the return to center yes. like pull down, yes. right? So there was this returning force. Whereas they've changed the system now, so it's now like a bunch of shots with no returning force, and then it then is just like this other mode. It's like two separate modes almost on top of each other, and I think it's fine. But it's because like we're, these guns that we expect to be really good, um, and like yeah, the RD. I mean, if I just like make one of those as well, and also the the fact that the low fire rate. It's also like symptomatic of other stuff, right? We expect these guns to rock because they have done for so long, but. Now, yeah, if I stick the Zhukov on this thing, um, they only did partly because of guns like the M4 that like did not rock. You know, yeah, so 68 on the RD. So they're going to feel like very, very average, these weapons. They're definitely not going to feel like laser beams. But they fire big bullets, so, you know, it's probably like where they should have been in the first place. And the same you're saying with the MDR is now like 80 recalls. So like, okay, so that's probably about right. And all the SMGs feel insanely good. But like these guns were the symptom of the system that made high RPM like terrible. You know, the HK was terrible. The M4 was like pretty bad unless you like completely modded it out. Like anything with fast fire rate just kind of sucked unless it had like really low recoil in, in the first place. Um, and so we've kind of like, yeah, we just devalued them on like multiple fronts all at once, which is quite interesting. And somebody put some, something in chat, which I kind of agree with, which is that like 9mm is balanced by range. Yeah, that's that definitely hard to snipe with. Like this is true. And like the accuracy is not necessarily that good, and the bullets are pretty slow. Yeah, you know the SMG bullets in general are pretty slow. Like uh, 45, 45 is pretty slow. Nine mil is pretty slow. Um, I think the only exception really is like the P ninety, which mm. is like is, is quite speedy for a uh, for an SMG. And like maybe the MP seven is like not too bad. Although the MP seven's like MOA is awful, so that yeah. kind of counterbalances that. And so then like you kind of move up into this next tier of like okay, well, what's good? And like I know I know we talked about it last week, but like. In between doing the SVD and the other stuff, I like I've been continuing to use the org. It's honestly it's so good, and I think the I don't know. I'm starting to get to the opinion that like the org might just be a bit broken. I I think the org might just be OP. Honestly, I think it's I think the gun's just overpowered. Like you don't mod it, and it gets like 43 recoil. Yeah, 42 recoil. I, it's like way better than all the other five five six guns. Yeah, and then you've got like 900 meters per second bullets because it's you know. Right. 855 like yeah the ammo is a bit scarce but now that i've got to peacekeeper 4 i'm now on like um 56a1 so i've just got 56a1 on tap now and i was doing fine with sost and 855 to be honest with you mm -hmm. because they're like 31 and 33 pen i think so you know they're both good but now i've got like 37 pen bullets it's just crazy like i don't know it just and the org just feels on point like the recoil is so tiny like, I've been uh, getting headshots all over the place, like, killing people with it, like, nonstop. It's uh, quickly becoming my favorite weapon. It's so cheap. It's so, honestly, it's so cheap. I was literally just doing a compare. I'm like, it's, it's coming in a video that I'm doing, like, right now. It's coming out tomorrow about, like, a, a few different weapons that I think are just, like, cheap, like, budget killers. But, like, the Org A3 is 583. What's the dollar rate at the minute? Is it, like, 140 in-game? Yeah, so it's, like, from, from Peacekeeper. Yeah, 140. I think it's about, like, 140. So it's about like 82k um, from Peacekeeper. It's like 70k on the flea market. But you can get the Org A1 for 48k on the... Actually, that's like that's quite expensive. That's been bought up quite a lot. But you could normally buy them for like 40k. Um, and then literally, you just need like the Org A3. You put the barrel back in. You put the foregrip back in. And then you need the low mount and that's it. So the Org A3 upper costs $32. And the the low mount is also thirty two dollars, so that's like sixty two dollars, which is what's that about eight grand, and you upgrade an org a one to an org a three, and then I just put the mini monster on it, and um the org the a three org sorry the yeah the a three org does have seven more ergo, so it depends on whether you think that's worth paying for or not um actually that's not completely true because i've I've also got a clash two p on this thing, let me see, so six more ergo, I think is the thing. So, you know, 59 ergo versus 65 ergo. There's, I, I tested them both in the hideout. There is basically no difference in the recoil profile of the two. It's completely identical. What, like the A1 doing this has 43 recoil and the A2 has, sorry, and the A3 has 42. So it's like six ergo and one recoil point. They're practically identical. And you can get the A3 version on the A1 
for like 8K. So it's like 48K, you get basically the same thing as the A3. I've been using that all the time. Like it's, it's sub 50K to get the base of the weapon. It's like bordering on like AK territory in terms of how cheap the thing is. It comes literally from the flea market at 46 recoil, which is absolutely outrageous. And it's a laser beam. It's genuinely a laser beam. It's so good. It's, I, think it's, I actually think it's too powerful. I genuinely think it's too powerful. Yeah, I mean, point. I would like it's, say... It's out of line with the other 506 guns. Right. I, th- I think in the context of its placement too, like it's on a level one trader and you get the AUG A3 in a level three trader, but like it's, you know, the A1's basically as good as the A3, right? You just need like yeah. Peacekeeper 2. It used two. to be a hidden stats thing, right? It, used it was to... a hidden stats thing before. So the A3 was better, but now they're gone. So they're the same. Practically speaking, yeah. And that's the other thing, like the scars. Like I see zero reason to use the scars. Like why would I ever want to use any of the scars? Quite frankly. Yeah, the five five six scars is no need. Even the three oh eight, I'm just like, why would I want to use the heavy when I could just I mean I, I use the MDR. MDRs, uh foul, uh SR twenty five, <laughs> like I, I don't know. This that's just I haven't really been that good on the heavy scar because the ergo's low and you can't really do much yeah. about that. Like you can't change up the stock. You can change out the pistol grip, you can, you know put some different rails on it, a handguard, you know, maybe suppress, you know, but like, it's like, Ergo's just really important this wipe. I feel like uh, in general, but anywho, yeah, what's the short scar? So if you, if you make like a shorty scar, is that any better? Like the heavy I don't even one? know how that compares, but that, but that, yeah, but then that makes it even worse than the MDR. Yeah. And I think this is the problem. The MDR's kind of got everything, doesn't it? Which is kind of the problem because all of us are actually really good. Because they have a high base ergo, and yeah. typically they're... It is slightly heavier. What, the SCAR? <laughs> the MDR is slightly heavier. Okay. Surprisingly. And, yeah, typically the recoil is fine out of the box. Like, you you know, you don't even want to really spec for recoil with the, the way the pop-ups and how the math works behind the scenes. So it's like, they're kind of just good out of the box. Even the 5.56 MDR. Um, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't really see a point in using any of the scars, which is unfortunate because one of the things about the old system that I did like was that there was, you know, it's, it would, you know, I don't like the hidden stats, but the way that they handled it, there was some interesting choices if you knew about hidden stats, because the scar, like, had slower rate of fire, but, like, it was, like, re- very vertical recoil oriented at the time, and it was a G36, which is, like, it shot a little faster, it had a little bit more um horizontal to it but not as much as an m4 but the m4 you know it's hidden stats sucked but you could like it was like the late white gun you could load all you know you had to spend a bunch of money on it but you could get it to like a better spot so there was like these you know interesting stories whereas now it's like because of the way they've done things and they kind of kept like the old progression with the new system it's just kind of made things a little weird like you know I don't really feel like I'm getting anything when I, you know, get like a scar at level three peacekeeper. I'm just going to use the AUG still, you know? Yeah, there's quite a few like weird things about this wipe. It's like, as a, and this is, these are the sort of the symptoms that you only see later on into the, into the playthrough, which are quite interesting to me. Um, one of which is, yeah, I keep getting heavy scars out of this gav case, mm-hmm. out of the moonshine. I don't know why. It has a real preference for scars this time. So I've got loads of them sat around and I feel like, I feel like I want to use them, but it's just, I can't sell them on the flea. Yeah. So what do I just like sell three of them to mechanic and then buy an MDR instead? Like that just feels kind of bad, but like, I'm not going through them quite quick enough to like get through them in the first place. So I'm just like, well, should I just sell them? Like they just seem to be like strictly worse. Um, and that also feels the same way as the armor system too. Like, you know, I pick up like a gen four or whatever, and I'm like, got these tall com plates or some other kind of plate in there. And I'm like, it's just a class five plate. Like, it weighs four kilos. Like, why would I ever use this over the GAC plate, which I can just like make every eight hours in the hideout? And like, I'm not even Ragman four, but you can just do the HPC barter every time and just get loads of these GAC plates if you want to do it that way. And then it's like, well, I've got class five plates just like lying around in my stash, but like, do I ever want to use them? They're like five, they're like nearly five kilos. Like, in what situation do I actually want to use these things? I don't really want to sell them to Ragman for like 30K because it's class five armor, but like, am I actually going to use it? I don't know. It just, it feels really weird. And then like, Going back to the weapons again, I've seen some people praising, well, you know, you can play like gun dress up any which way. You can make like loads of cool guns now because it doesn't really matter what you do. 
which is fine and that's cool and I'm, I'm happy that those players are enjoying mm-hmm. like that process because it was kind of annoying in some ways that you were like so restricted with yeah. your choices like it was so so cut and dried what was good and what was bad before but i feel that then on the other end of the spectrum players like me and probably you as well we're almost in this weird situation where i'm like you know how many like gun build videos have i done this by for example like almost none like most of it is just like this gun is good this gun is bad <laughs> do whatever you want like the build doesn't make any difference you know what i mean it's like it's weird it's like ergo wise yeah maybe it does matter but like I haven't done any videos of like, here's the min recall this, the recall is insane on this gun, min recall is good on this gun, like, except the orc, but that's because like, it's already like that. Like, I, I feel that a lot of the kind of like the, the problem solving of like the modding has kind of just gone away. And it's like, well, here are some of the guns that are good. Put on whatever, like, put whatever foregrip you want, put on whatever yeah. stock. It doesn't really matter. Like, yeah, yeah, you want some ergo, but like, the gun's either good or bad for Ergo, like, out the box, normally. And a lot of the guns that are actually good, you can't do anything to. It's like, I love the Org. What can I do to that? Add a suppressor is literally it. What else is good? Oh, the, the 7.62 MDR. What can you do? Add a suppressor. <laughs> That's literally it. It's like, you know, yeah, you can add a foregrip, sure. But, like, what difference does that really make? Nothing to the recoil. It's just adding Ergo. You may as well add the VFG. I just add the VFG on, like, every gun. Like, it makes no difference. What? My gun goes from 53 recoil to 52. Okay. Like, why would I bother adding a shift, the CQR? Like any of these things, like the RK2 is completely dead. The RK1 is oh, also pointless. Dude, the, the RK2 pointless. is like... What's the point in any of these things? You know? It's been dead for a while, so like we, but it's giga yeah, dead so, this way. So like, I don't, I don't want to like, I don't want to, I, I know I'm complaining, but like, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because it's just like, it's just a symptom of the system. And I much prefer this recoil than the old one, right? Like, the, let me make that very, very clear. Um, But it is sort of a shame that one of the outcomes of this is that modding is like, doesn't really matter as much. Yeah, I mean, I would say the caveat, the recoil doesn't matter as much, it feels like. Because I, too, have preferred Ergo over recoil on most things. Like, the one I've been going for a lot in, like, SMGs, like this MP7, is the SI Cobra. Because, like, sure, you could put the... um, what, What's the other one? The, the Express Grip on it? Well... Yeah, the SE5. Yeah, which is like one more recoil reduction at the cost of one less ergo bonus. For SMGs, it makes no odds. For right? SMGs, it, you know, it makes no odds. But even on like, you know, it, you know, and it, maybe the MDR, maybe <laughs> it's fine, you know, because it's already a bulb up, so it's not even going to get that much, you know. I don't know. Yeah. But, I mean, there is a, a bit of a... It's, it's tricky, too, because it's weird because the suppressors in general... They all just like pretty much across the board do the same thing, which is like reduce ergo by about 20 and take off some recoil, you know, and there's like some clear winners in that department, like for the five, 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 sixes, especially the mini monster plus, you know, that SP, F3, whatever, the Wartech. Yeah, the SF3P yeah, you could, like muzzle. You yeah. could use the Wartech, whatever. You could use the other one. But like that combo is just like, it reduces the least amount of ergo, which is good. Reduces some recoil. Okay. But the big thing is that it's suppressed, right? Like that's the big mm-hmm. win. And I don't even know if there's that much difference between different suppressors, like sound stuff. You know, maybe someone could... Oh, as far as sound's concerned, I don't think there's any difference at all. I don't think so I'm either. Saying, the, like, the loudness stat doesn't get you. I did, I did the test a while ago, um, but, like, all the guns, as far as I'm aware, still, I don't think they've changed anything since. They all play the same sound when you're suppressed. So it doesn't make any difference. The loudness stat is just, like, not used. Um, and I haven't done an in-depth test, but I know some people in my Discord have been testing that. Okay. And it's, like, it's, it's like, neg- it's like within error. Mm. But, you know, so if it is, if it is working, it's, like, not even... You know, it's not it's not noticeable. It's not practically any different. But um, this is yeah, this is partly it, right? They've compressed the muzzle like effectiveness, which is, I mean, that's probably okay, right? They used to reduce way too much recoil in the past, but like again, it's like another doubling up of the system. So it's like the hidden stats are gone. So the RPM differences have gone. The um, the actual like recoil model itself means that all the guns feel pretty good on, on recoil in general, so you don't need to mod for recoil. Then on top of that, all of the stats for recoil on all of the mods has also come down. So even if you do want to mod for recoil, you actually can't really. So like, let, let's put it this way. So the mini monster, I don't know if I have the old stats actually. Um, 
Oh, actually, is this the old stats here? Oh, no, I, I did. Ah, I, I saved the old stats. Perfect. So previously, right, the, the best suppressors within 5.56 was the Silence Co. Which it was, that was minus 23 ergo. Oh, sorry, minus 23 recoil. Um, and then the mini monster was minus 15. So that was quite a big gap. It was like eight, like a gap of eight between the two. Now, I wonder how that has changed. So now the Silencer Co. is minus 16. So that's like seven worse than it was. This is together. This is the muzzle brake and the suppressor together. And the mini monster is now at minus 11. So the gap is now five. So the gap has actually got smaller. The mini monster has relatively increased in power between the two. Mm. Then the ergo changes. The Silencer Co. combo used to be minus 24. And the Griffin used to be minus 20, actually. Um, because that was the one that was like half a recoil point worse. That was the meta one, because it didn't the half a point didn't matter too much. But anyway, so the silence curve was 24. The mini monster was minus eight. That was the 16 difference. Now the silence of is still I think they I don't think they changed that. So the silence curve, yeah, silence curve is still minus 24. And the mini monster is still minus eight. So the ergo difference didn't change mm -hmm. between the suppressors, but the recall did. Which is another reason why, like, yeah, recall mattered less anyway. And then the actual recoil component of the suppressor muzzle brake combos also got smaller. So the mini monster is just like shot up in power. So like between the mini monster and literally the best suppressors in the game, it's like minus 11 recoil versus minus 16. Mm. Not that big of a gap. Which is not that big of a gap. And you get against the best one, which is the Griffin with minus 20, you get 12 more ergo. So the mini monster is basically just the you just do it. You just use it every time. Yeah. In my opinion. You just use it every time. Um, I think 762 is like, doesn't it, 762 doesn't have the equivalent of like a mini monster. Not really. I think the best one for Ergo is actually the hybrid, which is minus 17. If you want something that's slightly better, I think the Daniel Defense is the next best. I think that's minus 18 together on Ergo, that is. Because the best recoil is the knight is the knight's armament like PRS QDC, which is used to be minus twenty five, and is now minus seventeen, and the ergo's minus twenty four. Yeah, they didn't change any of the ergos. Um, but yeah, so you, you're now looking at, uh, yeah, the, you're now looking at like again, it's a five difference. You go from minus seventeen to minus twelve, <laughs> going from the knights to the Daniel's defense, where uh, to the wave. Whereas previously you went from minus 25 to minus 17. So it was like eight difference or something. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Right. I feel that like in some cases, just the choices have been reduced a lot, especially like four grips were kind of touch and go anyway, because the recoil reduction didn't really matter on most weapons. Like the, the weapons had to be like really high base recoil yes. for it to make, make any difference. Whereas like now it just doesn't seem to make any difference at all. And that's why I end up just with like, yeah, you know, I end up with the VFG on everything because it's so cheap. Because you're talking about like the, um, which one are you talking about? The SI Cobra, mm -hmm. which is like two ergo more mm -hmm. than the VF than the VFG. Um, I, I can buy it now, so like, yeah, okay, maybe I maybe I pay eleven or twelve k for that extra two ergo rather than like three for the VFG. Like, okay, maybe just because we have infinite money and so have as much ergo as you can kind of deal but it's just like well, now i'm just picking ergo well they're all kind of the same it doesn't really matter i know it's, it's weird isn't it it's like it's kind of double-edged sword it's like yeah it's nice to see a variety of different guns but then when it doesn't really make any difference it's basically just like cosmetics almost yeah i mean that that's one i mean to kind of like put a bow on it for me i would say the the main criticism here for me is like there's not enough levers to pull like you know from like a dev standpoint like I played pre before the wipe. I was playing a lot of the Call of Duty, um, the Modern Warfare Three or whatever, um, mm. and I was just kind of like, you know, like man, you know, it's still a Call of Duty game. You know, it's like it, not much change, but like they really do a good job of what they do. You know, and like the gunsmith stuff and how you create a class and a kit is like just really good. Like you can take a gun and spec it into whatever type of style you want to go with which complements the whole like perks perks and abilities and, and mm. different equipment options you know like if you want to be a very like 
up close in their face. You could take a, a an assault rifle, you know, remove the stock and put these lasers that add like ADS speed. Like you got all these like levers you can pull to really like spec into something that feels like you unique that you're catering to your place solvers. Like Tarkov is like very more simple in that way where it's like okay i want to snipe and i want to shoot up close so smg uh you know <laughs> sniper <laughs> what get the best bullets i can get and you know slap one you know how much money do i want to spend on this kit you know how much do i want to hedge my bets am i going to pay a quarter of a million for the level four face mask to maybe protect me against the scav that won't hit me in my neck i don't know so anyways yeah they like <laughs> They really like the other thing, like just to keep on this theme is like it's kind of annoying too. Like accuracy stats don't really matter at all. Like anything that reduces accuracy or adds accuracy, it's like does nothing to the MOA. Like it's so minuscule. Like it has it practically mm. should like it. You could delete the stat and it wouldn't even matter, you know. Which is kind of a shame because like yeah, for ninety nine percent of the game, yeah. yeah, it's like there's there's like so many of these attachments, like these you know random ass muzzle breaks that are never used because they're not suppressed, but like. They, I don't know, they add, oh, you know, plus 3% accuracy, which, like, it affects the overall MOA, like, 0. 0.001 extra, you know, MOA. It's just, like, yeah, there's different aspects of that that I think makes it really uh, unfortunate of how, like, there's all these, there's this whole screen of attachments, and I'm only going to use, like, five of them, you know, it's just kind of a shame. Yeah, I always feel like now is the time because I think that we've taken away some of the like the system wasn't necessarily like complex and deep previously, right? Not not like not really as as we've discussed in the past. Like a lot of the time, there was quite an obvious meta for what build to use for different guns. Sure. But there was always still the kind of like economic overlay, which is yes. always what I interested. It's like okay, well, how much performance can I get from using the second or the third best thing? I can build a gun that's like a third of the price, but it's like, you know, 90% of the usability of the meta weapon, like the, you know, Chris Defiant stocks and like how early can I get those things is also like a trader progression type element to it as well. And um, that was sort of what I enjoyed and found interesting. Like, can I make a gun for 150k that performs nearly like a 300k weapon? And I think a lot of that has gone because I feel like now we've made the system like even more simple where it doesn't really matter what you put on so long as you just add some ergo. Like it'll be it'll be okay, which is which is fine. Honestly, that's fine. Um, and I think it makes the game way better and more accessible for lots of people. Like it's better for veterans to just experience. Like the experience of the game is way better for it. But now is the time, as you said, with the Call of Duty thing. Now is the time, probably, to like start moving horizontally outside the box. If they want to, I mean, I don't know. I don't think they'll change it honestly. But like, if they did want to reintroduce some more like interesting things into the weapon system then we do want to start doing things like, you know, ADS speed modifiers or, um, you know, the speed whilst you're a aiming down sights and like that, those kind of things that are extra, as you put it, like levers that we can pull to change stuff about like the weapon we're using. Um, you know, and you could even just like link it explicitly to weight in some cases and, you know, just, just some other mechanics that then allow you to influence that potentially because, yeah, I just, I, I just feel like the essence of the modding system is now become like too cosmetic almost and, and less like functional um i think it's like it's i think it's more i think it's even more obvious now what to do than it was before let's put it that way and that's like not to say that the gunplay is is worse in any way for it because i think it's actually better but i just think it's a shame that we've like lost a bit on the on the modding side and it would be awesome if we could have those little things that influence some of that other stuff i don't know what else you could change like ads speed and like like ads yes like ads speed in and of itself i know that's influenced by ergo you could have like explicit modifiers to ADS speed for like certain foregrips, for example, and like m moving whilst ADS, having chain you know modifiers to that. I've always been a big fan of. Like we talked about that ages ago before the system changed. So you could even do stuff like that as well. Maybe I, I don't know, but um, so just something else, something else outside of just recall and ergo. Because now, before it was a balance of the two, now recall's gone. So it's just like practically speaking, build yeah. some ergo and then run it, and every gun will feel okay. Yeah, yeah, because even like yeah, it just feels like we kind of have the same. Like M four is filled the exact same as the last wipe in terms of what you're picking. You're just kind of like slightly preferencing ergo more. I would say, like I don't. 
I don't use the on four, I just use the org. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, I don't know, man. I wish, I just, uh, man, it just paints me because you know, I, I've seen, this will be the last thing and then, then we'll, we'll move on. But I've okay. seen the Tarkov SP, the realism mod, and the things they've done there with like the modding and stuff and like, it's just so much like it's more in depth, but like you can take a weapon and like, it, like when was the last time you seen anyone rock a, uh, an AK with a tube and a butt pad on it? You know what I mean? Like one, one in like a million raids, I've seen someone do that, but like because of all the different levers that's been added, like you got stats like angle, you know, like the, the angle, the gun, the recoil goes. So you could put a foregrip on that, like, cuts the angle, you know, maybe the gun's cursed and it prefers a upright, you know, pattern, but maybe you put the foregrip on that makes it more vertical. But then you do that, it means you can't do this other foregrip that reduces horizontal spread or, you know, dispersion or, you know, ADS speed, whatever, you know, just is like, if they have mm -hmm. more levers, I feel like it would be more interesting for people like us. And, and the other side part I want to mention about cosmetics is like i find it like problematic that they're adding cosmetic items that are separate items within the economy because now it's like you know now you have like two sources of these express scripts oh. you know but they're the exact same <laughs> thing it's just one's tan and the other one's black so now like the overall value is like diminished because now there's two sources of it you know it's like the afg grips right yes there's always loads of them because there's a forest green one, there's an FTE one, there's a black one, there's a gray one, there's a tan one. There's like, there's just like a ton of different types of the same item. So there's like five instances spawning in the loop pool. Yes. So they're always cheap. Same with like MOE AK handguards. There's like plum, there's again FTE, there's black, there's, uh, yeah, it's just like there's loads. Which so, creates a, another problem yeah, where your loop pools are now even bigger when you open up that weapons crate, you know, you're <laughs> hoping for that. I don't know, AK you needed, but now you're just getting uh, another AFG crit. <laughs> like, there's got to be, like, I, I don't know, because they, they showcased that one time way, way back when they were showing off the Woods expansion. Um, they showcased, like, that muzzle break of, like, a unicorn skin on it. And, like, people were, like, freaking out, you know, they're like, <laughs> the hills are burning, <laughs> they're on fire, you know. They're like, no, you were just, you know, testing something, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know. But I feel like that would be, if you wanted to do that, like, that'd be really mm. cool. You could, like, skin your gun, like, paint it, you know, like, tactical yeah. and stuff, whatever. But Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I just feel like, I just don't know. I just love the org. I think it's great. I think it's probably the best all round all rounder right now. So it feels awesome. Like sure, the MDR and stuff is good, but if you want to just grab something easy and cheap, this thing feels insane. I've been using it a lot, and I'm probably going to carry on using it a lot, probably to my own detriment because I got to I got to think of something to talk about other than the York. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't <laughs> wait to use it whenever I'm <clears throat> level fifty nine and done with all the quests of using random guns and loadouts. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, there's a another reason to throw off the shackles of the system. <laughs> there's a small period of time where I was using on Shoreline <clears throat> back when you know I had a bunch of Shoreline quests yeah. and it was pretty good. So, yeah. One random note before we finish up, okay. I discovered something cool today on Shoreline. I was playing a scav because I was trying to find a fuel conditioner because. People had told me that they do spawn in that cattle bit. So I went up there, looted a few things, didn't find a fuel conditioner. And I had a scav exfil that I hadn't ever seen before called like Old Bunker. Oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because I don't really play, I'd ever play scav on shoreline. So I had to look it up and I was like, where even is this? And I was like, oh, it's in like the, it's near the car X, right? It's near the cattle ranch. It's like in the north, like the rocks on the north of the map. Um, over on that side, over on the east side. And I went over there. To go and extract. And guess what it says outside the door? D2. D2. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And I was like, 
hold up, this is awesome. <laughs> like, this is super cool because like that edge of shoreline, yeah, is is like directly next to reserve because of the dome. We know that already. So it does make you wonder, like, where where does that connect? Like, where could that connect? Like, it could be, you know, it could also, it could almost be like, you know, you come down the dome, down the big mm-hmm. set of stairs. Before you go to D2, I think there's like, is there another door behind you? Like, it could legitimately be in there. Yeah. Like, that would, it would be right there. That'll be it. Because like, that path to, is like going away from shoreline. So you could walk through that entrance and then come out at the bottom of the stairs by dome. It's like theoretically possible, I think. It's, it's, that's probably too far. It's probably too far along, I think. So it's probably more so towards like the pawn building or something. But like, if you mapped it out, like you might be able to make some sense of it. Maybe, Pro- probably not. Probably, it's probably too far. It probably doesn't, doesn't actually like line up or anything. But I, I love it. I love it when the maps line up. And I was like, yo, D2 entrance on, on woods. This is sick. So yeah, just something random. Not to ruin your fanfics or anything, but is that the same model that's used on Woods up by the mountain? Because there's two of them. There's one that leads, like you can actually go in there and there's like some loot. Or if you do like the jump up. One by Sniper Scout. Yeah. And then there's one on the opposite side. Hmm. But I don't know if it actually says D2 or not. I'm pretty sure that doesn't say it because I, okay. I could go and check. I, I don't, I'm not hundred percent, but like, I feel like I would have noticed or maybe they changed the model. Um, if they change the model, then maybe it says it now, but I don't think it does. I don't think it does. From memory, I don't think it does. I don't know. I was just curious. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like who, who the hell knows where that one goes? Yeah. Like into the mountain is it's nice guys, you know, Tin foil hat, the mountain splits apart and the nuke comes out, you know, kind of <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines. But uh, yeah, no, I, I like it. I like it finding little secrets like that because that never used to be there. That bunker yeah, wasn't, wasn't there before there. the expansion. Yeah. That never used to exist. Um, so I was like, oh, yeah, because I was like, what old bunker? Yeah. Like, it's just a set of rocks. And yeah, when I went up there, I was like, aha, there's something new. It's kind of cool. And that's the thing that I'm enjoying about this wipe, like exploring all these, like, old places that are now new um it's fun well i've actually used the tree crossing on shoreline a lot yeah that's actually i thought uh i like that i thought i would die a lot but like i i spawned a tunnel and i just trimmed old my way across the entire map and like three minutes in i was on the eastern side just like (laughs) i'm like where you guys don't think i'm supposed to be like everybody uses that to get into resort but like i'm on your side of the map before you can even get to like weather station for example i was like i'm a menace i'm I'm from the (laughs) i'm from the west side and you're not expecting me here i'm like in the wrong place this is great. This is awesome. Yeah, no, that I didn't meet anyone sadly. That addition really helped out, like with the flow on that side of the map. I feel like yeah, it's another great alternate route. Um, yes, yeah, more exploration, more discoveries. Oh yeah, have you done the pharmacy quest on the streets? Yes, that new one in the back of uh, yeah, the rich people apartments, what we call. <laughs> It's yeah. What was that? What's that bit called? I forget. Um, expo. Yeah, it's by Expo, but there's a, it's called something else. There's like the something buildings. What what is the name? Um, Cardinal Apartments. That's it. Cardinal Apartments. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I was like, I was looking at the map for it, and I was like, why? Where's there a pharmacy up here? Like, what? And uh, yeah, went through the gate of just like, oh, there's like nothing here except for a pharmacy. The chat was just like, <laughs> don't go left because you'll get shot by a sniper. I was like. Why? Like, why would I just be shot by a sniper here of all places? This is really bizarre. But anyway, yeah, it was, yeah. It was kind of a weird. I was like, huh, this is because my friend showed it to me because they were like playing streets a ton when the white first dropped, and I was like, this is so weird. It's like you got this it, like parking lot with like various cars and you know trash or whatever, and like a little food stand. There's like you know all these buildings, but there's just one. Like the only thing to do there is to go in that pharmacy. <laughs> loot it and leave it's like maybe they like ran out of time and wanted to you know add some other stuff or something i don't know but maybe that's just what they wanted yeah. to do I, I don't know but either way it's it's just like such a it was one of those moments it's like huh this is really cool and it's like wait a minute this isn't as cool like it's still cool but not as cool <laughs> as i thought it was gonna be <laughs> yeah i know exactly what you mean yeah that was bizarre that was bizarre but yeah i'm, I'm enjoying exploring all these little bits yeah. every day there's like there's still so much on streets for me to learn like seriously, so much to learn. 
There's like so many like little bits and pieces of the map, like one thing connects to another mm-hmm. and like going down this little like back alley and like I'm getting much better at it, but it's still it's this is still a lot. Like even the post office building, even though I've been through it like a thousand times, the fact that there's like four different stories and like each story is different and each one's got different rooms on it and one of them's collapsed here and you have to go under this bit and stuff, it's like God, it's a nightmare. Like unless you unless you play it literally all day, every day, like very easy to get lost. And like even Pinewoods now, like there's two traversable floors now with the, you know, the upstairs restaurant or whatever, and like a thousand different stairwells with different ways to get up and down and all of that stuff. And the middle of the map now is, you know, you can go through a bunch of different doors you couldn't before and stuff. Like but it's it's nice because it's feeling a lot more open than it was. Yeah. I felt very like tunneled and like it's you know you have to go down here and then you have to go through here and then you have to go through this door and da 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 it was like feel like it's a lot less like that now it's just like oh you can like wheel your way through post office and go through out the front or you can go down this way go through the underpass you know come out this bit go up into pinewood like go along the second the second story and then come down that way and like make take a nice safe route through the lobby and then like loop back go through the military academy so you can skip out nikita's bar if you want to and like, there's like lots of awesome ways of doing it now which i think is really fun so I just need to keep bringing, I need to keep, keep remembering to bring the green flare to the map every time I, I get to like waiting for players and I'm just like, oh, I forgot the green flare. Like every time, no, it makes it so much easier. <laughs> the only part of that map that feels really bad to me is, is kind of the strip from the archway all the way up to the veterinarian clinic and then all the way kind of, yeah. to construction and then Concordia. Like that whole like outskirts of that side of the, map just like feels like concordia feels like very sketch to like navigate through you know what i mean like you you almost yeah. want to like have a section where you could go from like crash site to like around construction and they come out the bed like i know exactly like, what like you it mean just feels... that, i think that's the one thing the map is missing it's like one extra street yeah along the back of concordia now because i think everyone has to funnel it's like either you go through like the middle lane so to speak where you could get shot either left or right or you go down the left lane or right lane or whatever the lane that's like concordia through construction through the alleyway through the veterinary clinic down the archway Mm -hmm. like that whole side just feels very like i get into so many fights on that side of the map in that particular area of like especially player scows you have to walk past check 15 and it's like Oh, people could shoot you out the window of Check 15 as well, yeah. which is like really awful. I did figure out how to get, because, and then, yeah, so if you go down, if you go past construction and then you're going through that alleyway between, I think it's Check 12 on the left and then Check 13 on the right, I think. Um, it's like, it's, and all you can go in is the little shop corner at the moment. But if you keep going towards, yeah, the archway, but you take the first left, then you go down to like the vet's bit. But if you go left again and you go into the courtyard and then you go left again, you can get into the building oh, that yeah, overlooks yeah, yeah, like yeah. that area. I got shot from there ages ago and I was like, you know what? I should really figure out like how you get in here because I thought it was through the shop, but it's not. You have to go all the way around in the big loop past the vet spit. So it feels kind of sketchy. But once you're in there, you're like tucked away and you have this like beautiful sight line. And um, lo and behold, somebody ran straight past and I killed them out the window. I was just like, this is like, ins- this is an insane spot because like, you hear them coming from a mile away if they're like coming anywhere near you. Mm. There's nothing around there. So there's no reason why anybody would come and try to kill you, right? Like if you're in the, the apartments above Lexos, then it's kind of, lots of people go around there because they sort of are scouting out or, you know, going through the, the financial bill, the bank below it and stuff. But like, yeah, if you're in that one near the vets bit, it's crazy, uh, actually. It's like a really good little overlook and loads of people go over there because there's nowhere else to go because that courtyard is its own dead end, as you were saying, because it's, I, I wish that you could go through that courtyard to the right and then like round the back of construction and up to Concordia that way. I think it would just be a lot, the map would flow a little bit better around that area because it feels very constricted right now. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think it's all, I think it's the positioning of Lexos, honestly. Like the fact that you don't know whether Kaban's going to be there and if he is, like you're just going to get grenade launched before you get a chance to respond. That's true. So you can't ever go that way. So you have to go through Sparger slash like construction and down that corridor. But there's nothing to the left. You just, you can't go that way. Or you just say, I'm not going to play that at all. And I'm going to come out by the car extract and I'm going to start at theater. Like once, once you're out of those two avenues, because it's like, I don't want to go anywhere near Lexos. Like I'm just going to get exploded anytime i go out onto the road i just get blown up um so that's kind of what makes it like extra toxic and people are like running there for caban as well so it's like pretty hot pmc spot anyway yeah 
So yeah, I think it could do with like one more. Like it used to be even worse, but I think it could do with like one more road, that final road from Crash Site down the side. And then it would be pretty well rounded. Like it, w- it wouldn't even need to go down the whole way to the map. Like I'm not saying that you can go all the way down that road from the like expo, but you could just extend it down to the bit by construction and leave it at that in theory. Or like or maybe one extra stretch down so it connects to the courtyard by the vets. That would honestly be fine. I think. Yeah, I was thinking like it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be much. Maybe maybe it like circles <laughs> around construction and puts you out by like the, the little yeah. scav sewer vent extract that's like in between Concordia and construction. There's like that uh, uh oh yeah, yeah. lane there, that street that's like like it, it, if you're new to the map you think, "Oh, I'll just go around construction." It's like, "Nope, it's just a gate." And then, you know, you can't really do anything. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Giga, before we wrap it up? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Kind of in, yeah. Got to just get myself to this. I got to get myself to level 42. Oh, it's, so, it's so, so far away, man. So, so much XP. There. I will eventually, but. Yeah, it's weird. I just feel so compelled to do it. Like, I never normally run offline, like, or raids off stream to do, like, random shoreline tasks. Mm-hmm. But, like, I literally did that last night. I was like, what is what is my life coming to? Like I never do this. This is weird. Which one were you doing? Uh, uh, it was some combination of wet job and cargo. Oh, okay. I can't remember exactly which yeah, one. Yeah. It was like go get the slider key from admin mm. slash go get the documents on top of the water barrels. So I did those at the same time. After killing the two man with the org from the weather station sniper outlook. <laughs> if I had uh, actually. Uh, yeah, if I'd had a bolty, I could have got a shooter point and have not done that, to be, to be fair. But I never see anybody go up there, so I was like, I'm just going to sit up there and like write scripts with it on like on another monitor. I... I was like, oh, I hear someone. It's like the, gen- the General Sam thing, you know? Read the book with the headphones on, and then you hear somebody, and then I go, go to the PC. And, yeah. that's, that's how I got a couple of my kills. You're talking about the big tower uh, up at Winter Station? Yeah, I was like sitting there, yeah. crouched. It was funny, because I, I spawned in near weather but i was like all tabs so i tap back in so i was a little bit late so i went up there and there was a scav there i shot it killed it went up there sat and then like two minutes later a pmc just starts sprinting up there dives instantly on the body <laughs> I'm like well free shooter burn kill for me i'll take it <laughs> you know it was just like, <laughs> what was he yeah. thinking he was he was he was a madman all right yep i think it's gonna do it for today's episode as always Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye.